internet to me and okay we move that okay hi guys hello hello it's thursday night and we're going to have a live craft arts and craft show we're going to do lots of cool things we will be um Working on a panda. We're going to try to paint a bird. Trying to paint a woodpecker. We're going to explain about our ACT cards tonight. And we're going to look at our dolls. And I think we're going to try to do a blizzard book. So we've got these little things we're going to do tonight. So if, you, if you're watching this uh, at a later time. And you want to speed through the, the parts. You may. In the meantime, I will be interacting with the, the chat room. And that's how we do it on here. We talk to each other and they ask me questions and stuff like that. And we do it. So I'll see who's in my chat room. And Janet's in my chat room. Hi, Janet. <laughs> Hi, Janet. <laughs> Look at my women. Look at my power women. I used the butterflies out of my sticker book. <laughs> <laughs> wow i have gotten so much done today thanks to you hi clinda hello friends hello friends so we've got a full lineup of things to do we're going to do it we are going to do it i've got everything all ready to go if we if we get there so when we get there what else I can do over here on the side a little give me a little room here that's what I need is a little little room um how's everybody been how's your day been hi Joyce <laughs> yes hi Glenda Hey, uh, yep, yeah, I'm enjoying Glenda's stickers tremendously. <laughs> sure am. So, let's see. Um, what do y'all want me to talk about first? I was going to do a quick review over the dolls. I can do that first. The, the dolls, I explained Tuesday, these little paper dolls, and uh, they're real cute, and they're real easy to make, and uh, all you need is, is just some brads and some, some stickers and glue the feet and the feet and the hands on and the head, and then you can make your hair, and there you got a cute little bookmark doll baby. So they were really easy to make. You can use scrap paper. You can use you can use a cereal box, cracker box, and you can make this doll. It's real easy to do. So I was wanted to show you this few things one more time, and then I'm going to maybe use up some of my scraps, and I'm going to put it away for a little while because we're going to learn how to do something else tonight. I'm going to show you how to, to make a blizzard book. And it's just a name. That's because it was invented during a blizzard storm. <laughs> Somebody was having a, a slow day and did not want to sit at home and do nothing. And so this lady made up this little book. And it's called a blizzard book. And I'm going to show you how to make it. So I'm going to put the little dolly away unless somebody has any other questions. Hi, Melissa. I'm glad. Hi, I'm here. I'm glad. I'm glad you're here. Hi, Cheryl. Hi, everybody coming in. Hello, hello. I was talking to Melissa yesterday, and we had some nice conversations. 
and uh, I did find a cigar box in the bottom of my bin over here, so I might as well get it out and use it. So it's going to be the doll box. I'm going to put the dolls on it, and I need to put the uh, labels on them. So I'll know what's in them. Wouldn't that be good? But if anybody needs any, uh, the head, the head was just glued on the head. Mm -hmm. It was just glued on. I glued it on here and then I flipped it over and glued another side to the other side. Uh, it's double sided. Very simple. Glue it on. Just regular glue. Glued it onto the top of her. That's all I did. And if uh, you guys are making your dolls and you uh, need for me to do another review later on, just let me know. I'll, I'll show them to you again. I'll do it. I'll do it. So this is going to be my doll babies. can see it okay um we're going to talk about acts for just a few minutes while we're waiting on people to come in we are a little, just a little bit early but we're good real good um you know um we were talking about acts and it's that's a new subject to some of you girls some of you most of you know what they are but some of you have heard us talking about atcs and it stands for artist trading card an artist trading card so you've heard of baseball cards and you've heard of bubblegum cards and you used to and maybe pokemon cards and there might be other game cards out there that you trade and you collect well, artist tr artist cards are cards that we trade, uh, all of us in the crafting uh, society. We are we trade our cards back and forth, and the only thing is, is we trade like I give you one and you give me one, and then we've traded, right? So we each get we each get a card, and so that's how we like to do it. And of course, I don't know that these will ever become worth anything, like baseball and football cards but um they might they we might we might have a picasso in the among us that is uh you know in the works and and if and if that's so then we'll have the art card to that we can retire on <laughs> we'll have that art card but this is my collection of acts okay so so uh these are cards that I have made over the years, and um, there, some of them are just, they've got a little piece of rope, they've got a butterfly, they've got a punched out flower, and then the background is like a painty paper uh, mixed art thing, and this was done with Aunt Beck's Dirty Dozen, and I made enough to make cards out of. So, if you haven't played with Becky uh, at Epix Creations, she does every now and then. She'll do a dirty dozen, and she she'll she'll make your paper beautiful if you play along with her. So um, so anyway, these are just a few of my cards. Um, um, I, I I I've I've made so many. I don't know what to say. Um, I've been making them for a year now. And, uh, and I have, I have given a lot of them out and these were like my leftovers and see, this one's got a, 
a, a, a safety pin. And I think this was Lisa's. Yeah. This was a pick 10 gang from Lisa's. Uh, Lisa at My Eclectic Life. And what you do is you use a whole sheet of paper to play the game on. And then when you get done with the game, you cut it into these artists, uh, two and a half by three and a half. And then you finish decorating it uh, with all your little snippets and things. So this was a, that was a game. And then, and then there's, um, I got some more artwork in here. These are for, uh, this is for a pocket ACT game that you can play and you trade nine cards. And that one takes a little bit more time. But, but here are some more ACTs that uh, I've collected over the years. And I'm not sure if there's a date on them or not. Um, yes, 2017. And this was a swap that I was in. And there was about 20 different girls. And so I have like, you know, look at this card where she sewed on her card. And, uh... This is subject was the title was happy on this one. Peace, love, be happy. <laughs> and that is really, really cute. And I think some of these are date related. This is this one's a dedication to her our birth year. And this person had 1960 was her birth year. And the Mustang was popular, so she put a Mustang on her car. And uh And this is uh, from one of the girls that I watch all the time. Her name is Kimberly. And uh, but anyway, uh, it was back in 2017. And all of these are different. And I did this one. And this was this one was this one was dedicated to when I was born in 1958. And it's called Wendy Win Weekly. Wendy Weekly. And it was about a paper doll. So she's a paper doll, and she's got on layers on her clothes. I made her clothes with her petticoat and, and made her clothes, made her little apron. And then on the back, you can see the, the dashes where I actually put her through the and made her a paper doll, you see. and um, But this was an AT swap, and the, the title was Decade in 2017. And, uh, and, and I was born in 58. There's 1958 up here in the corner. And this was the first time I was in a swap. So I did not know <laughs> if I could do it or not. And I thought it, it represented me. I don't remember Wendy Weekly because I was a baby. But I looked it up and she, she was very popular in the newspaper to have a doll baby, to uh, have a paper doll. And there was a dress in, in there every Wednesday for the little girls to cut out every Wednesday to add to her to your doll. So that's where I got mine at. So, um, and this, this girl here, she was born in 68 and she just put her horoscope, her horoscope sign on her card. So they can be, you know, they can be big or little and you could do so much, all kinds of things with your cards. And they're very interesting. They're all, there's two pages of them. And then we go into here, and uh, I don't know if it was last year. Let's see what the date is on this. This is a Mary Alti Air doodle. We started doodling, and I don't have a date on it. I don't have the date on them. But Mary did these doodles, and she, we were doing them on ACT cards. And she would do... Um, Four doodles, five, there's five doodles here. And then on the sixth card, we put all of these doodles on one card and turned it into a, 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 a combination. So all of these doodles here are somewhere on here. Uh, I don't see the dime. Oh, yeah, I do. There's a smaller, a smaller. But there's the flowers. There's the diamonds. And here's, this is in the background. And then this is a leaf of some sort right there. And then some kind of a 
bored and i've got that on there so so she was doing this for a while and it was cute it was really cute so we looked up online and she would go to the smithsonian uh, museum or the organ the the big library of the world and look up uh things uh, uh she would look up patterns and she would go to people's clothes and look at their patterns on their clothes and blow them up. And she did all kinds of things. So those were Mary's. And here's another set on the back. So this was the next week that we did this. And we did the five doodles on five cards. And then on the sixth card, we doodled these on to one card. And that was our little thing with, with uh, Mary. But anyway, um, I'm not going to spend too much more time on this, but as you can see, they're in a nine pocket baseball card holder and a three ring binder. So, um, you know, this is what you, if you collect very many ACT cards and you don't know where to keep them, this is a great place to store them so that you can look at them and they won't be just stuffed away in a box and you forget about them. I can get this out at any time. And some of these cards uh, are from you guys. Um, I noticed a few of them. And I know there, that uh, Deborah Adams is in here. There's one from Violet. Uh, So I can, there's one from Lisa. There's one from Elizabeth Brewer's prompts. I did this. See, I used to watch Elizabeth Brewer and she did prompt games and I made, I made ACTs out of them. And this was from her watching Elizabeth's show. So, you know, uh, I've been watching and this was done in uh, January of 2019. So, uh, so anyway, these are, these are my ACT collections and I keep them in the book and I have them to look at anytime I want. And as you can see, I've got pages and pages of them. Now, my next question is, oh, somebody had, Cheryl had mentioned also that you could trade uh, circles. And these are called artist trading coins. These are coins. And, and I only have two. <laughs> I only have two. One is from Sharon Lombard. And the other one is from Aunt Beck. And, uh, and if, we, if we get any further down the road, we can put this on, add this to the to-do list. But I'm not interested in doing them right away. But uh, I am interested in asking each one of you who are playing with the ACTs with me if you want to if you have not signed up you need to get your name to me and you need to put it in the comment below if you have not told me your name already uh you can message me your name and uh those are the two best ways to get a hold of me if there's anybody in the the uh, video watching this at a later time the deadline is june the 30th so i'm asking all of these girls to make their act cards two and a half by three and a half and i'm asking them to send me two of them just two and and uh, then i will in turn mail you two back and they will be two different ones from two different girls there will be you'll get one from the the each card will be from two different people so I need to know if there's anybody that does not have a baseball card holder. I need to know that right now. If you don't have one of these, I will be willing to send you one. Okay. So you just need to tell me. And I've already got Melissa in. I've already got Melissa's sorted out. So Melissa, I, yeah, I know you don't have one. <laughs> But this will go in your three ring binder, Melissa. Okay. This will go in your binder book that you found. I was asking her if she had a three ring binder. And she said she didn't think so. But she said she found one today. Okay. So when you get your cards, they'll already be in here. I'll put them in here for you. And uh, But this, this can be folded up like this, and it can be slipped into a, an envelope, a business size envelope, 
not a small one, but a nice uh, one of the larger business size envelopes. This will fit inside of this envelope. So it won't be too difficult to get it to you. OK, so it will. It is mailable. I will have to put an extra stamp on. So it'll be a 55 cent stamp and a 15 cent stamp if you have any or two 55 stamps. We'll make sure this will get mailed to you. And I've got plenty of stamps. So uh, if anybody needs a baseball card holder, just let me know. Let me know. Let me know. Let me know. I think most of you probably already have some. But uh, yeah, I'd like to get you started anyway. They, they, they run about $10 for a box of 50. And they're really inexpensive if, you, if you're using them like I am. They, they have, I mean, how else would I store all of these, all of these cards? And if I have to, I can put front and back, you know, I can double them up. But I like to leave the backs open so I can see who they're from. I got mine from Walmart. And you can order them online, walmart.com, and they'll ship them to the house. So, okay. Okay. So that's the ATCs, and, and I will give you a sneak peek of my ACTs, and I, I started them on here, and so I was, I just wanted to show you, I got a, I got a butterfly from my sticker book, and then I cut my girl out of a fashion magazine, and and look what I made my card out of. I made it out of a tissue box. Unknown, lo un unknown location as usual. I'll get more. What? Uh, what? Linda. <clears throat> yeah. Um, and Walmart. You know, you might have to get $35 worth of things from Walmart. Yeah, you can go to Amazon and find them. And But if you already order from Walmart, like I do, oh, the card holders. Okay. But uh, uh, but I, I, I got a big box of them from Walmart. Walmart and but if, you, if you order, if you need anything, just order it from Walmart and they'll send it all to the house. Now, sometimes they have pickup, and if it's a, a, a common item, they will make you come and pick it up at the at the door. But they do, if you buy so much from Walmart, it's free shipping, so I don't mind. Yeah, Glenda lives in the States. Mm -hmm. So anyway, these were my cards, and and I'm going to, uh, uh, some of them I had, I had stenciled on because this was a playing card. But these are all uh, these are all uh, tissue boxes. So I'm just got I'm going to put a label on the back with my name, and my subject is going to be Power Women, and the date on the back is pretty much all you need on the back. Now, if you're ever doing it with a group and you want to put your address on the back, you may you can put your whole address on the back, and that way maybe whoever gets your card. Uh, maybe they will mail you something, you know, some happy meal or something, you know, that would be kind of nice. And, you know, all of our addresses are in the front of, at the file, in the files at the top of my Facebook group, uh, our group, our group. And um, there's a file up there that has, just click on files and then there will be an address file. And you just have to click on it again when you get into that. And you'll see all of our addresses. And uh, and Violet, uh, one of the girls, a moderators in here, is so nice to help me with uh, all of the typing. And she alphabetized all of our names in the group address list. And she uh, alphabetized it by first names. So if you want to look for my address, I'm under B and so forth. So, and hopefully your address is in there. If it's not in there, there is a place for you to comment to add your name. And our group is a closed group. 
so nobody can get into our group and check our addresses out unless they're a part of the group and we try to screen everybody that comes in so that we don't have any gamers or any stalkers and stuff so we try to have a very safe group we don't allow any shenanigans in our group <laughs> so anyway those are the act cards i've done up so that's all i'm going to say about them okay we're going to move on to the blizzard book almost seven o'clock Got that then so uh and if anybody is not on the list you need to tell me so i can add you to our list i've got a list going and you can always join in later i will have some extra cards for those that are late in coming in and stuff so uh there won't be a problem okay well we will we will run through this smoothly so as soon as you get me your cards I hope you're starting to work on them or think about them and um, and get get those out of the way. And once I get everybody's, I can go ahead and, and mail them all out. So, you're, you know, if you're not getting it to me very fast, you're holding everybody else up. <laughs> Just saying. Just saying. So, uh, you don't want to be the last one. So... The next thing I'm going to show you is how to make a little blizzard book. And a lizard, little, little blizzard book is um, a book. Clean my desk up a little bit. It's a little book that you can put paper in. And, and you can take this paper out at any time you want. If you need this paper, you can pull it out and use it at any, you know, if you want to take it with you. It's a little traveling book. So if you're going to the beach or the park or you're going to go for a visit to see someone or you're going to go sit in the doctor's office for about four hours, you can take this with you and you can you can sketch you can do some urban sketching you can write journals on it you can use it for a notepad anything you want to use your paper for is yours but the idea of it was that you could take the paper out and nothing is pinned down permanently so this paper can come out i can paint on it i can put some watercolor paper in here i can even put some notebook paper in here with lines and i can write um you can do anything you want with this and then then you, when you're before you leave you put it back in here and you're put it back in your pocketbook and you're ready to go cheryl says i have an idea to put my two acts in pockets baseball pockets and then you can mail and you can mail okay uh, so anyway um, <clears throat> this is this is it the only thing you need today is three pieces of paper three pieces of paper so I'm gonna pick some collared paper today and make it nice and colorful what goes with green and orange how about pink fluorescent pink we are bright today so um <clears throat> two of the sheets are going to be folded in half two of the sheets are going to be folded in half and then they're going to be cut in half You can use a paper cutter or you can just use a pair of scissors like me and get her done. No must, no fuss. Boom. Okay. Then you have four sheets, right? Four half sheets is what you end up with. Now, if you need to take notes, go ahead and take notes. Hi, Nancy. So... The next thing you're going to do is take these papers and fold them in half again. And 
And these are going to be the papers that go into your book when we get your book done, the spine done. There's four pages in here and they're folded in half. So we're going to lay them to the side and they'll be ready for when we finish the, the spine of the book. Okay, how many of you are folding with me? I need one piece of paper on your desk. And I'll do it slow if you're folding it with me. If you're folding it with me, I'll go slow. Just lurking. I'm going to make mine in the morning. Okay, Janet's in bed. I understand. Okay. Now, it's not real hard, okay? But it can be confusing. But I try to say it real slow and real easy so that you can understand, okay? So, see, this is a sheet of paper as well. This was a sheet of paper. This was a piece of scrapbooking paper. And it was colored, okay, and white on the other sides. And I cut it to the size of a piece of paper. Okay, Janet, I'm going slow. So, so this was the this was the spine over here. Okay, so we're going to start with a new piece of paper. You're going to fold it in half. And I think I'm going to try to maybe do some pencil drawing on here so that you can see my half just, just for demonstration purposes. So I folded it in half, okay? And you, if you don't have a, a, like a pair of scissors, you can take a pair of scissors and run across that folded edge and crease it down a little bit harder. That works really good. And I happen to have a bone folder <clears throat> that I can use as well. So it doesn't matter what you use to, to crease your creases. You can even do it with your fingernails, okay? So it's really good and folded good. Then you're going to take each side and fold them to the middle. So you fold it in half, and then you fold those halves in halves the same direction and then you're going to crease it down with your bone folder or your scissors so now we have four parts we have four parts one two three four now the next step is that we need eight parts. We need eight. So we want each one of these to be folded in half. Okay, so the first two are going to be kind of easiest because you can just fold them in on the line to fold their halves. Okay. And so I'm going to go fold the outsides in because they're the easiest. We want to fold these two in half too. But I'll show you an easy way to do it. So I got these folded in half. So in order to fold these two in half, I take this in and fold it to this line. And it folds it folds it for you in, in half over here on this one. And for this one to be folded in half, I just fold this one up to this line. Uh, it doesn't matter how you do it. If you want to use a ruler and, and go, all that, go all that way, you may. You can do any way you want. But the main thing is we, you can even just take it like this and fold it and fold it. And continue to fold it this way. You know, if you want to do that, you can do it that way. But I like folding it each one separate, and it keeps the um, it, it it keeps the balance. It keeps it balanced. So so I'm going to go ahead and draw down each one of these so that you can see eight sections.
Now, the next thing I'm going to do is just something that will help us along. And I'm going to fan fold my, my paper. I'm going to fan fold it one one direction and one the other direction. And I'm doing this. Uh, and I'm going to do it the other direction so that I get all my creases really folded down and they're, they're, they're able to uh, be versatile. So now I'm going to go the other direction on my fan fold so that all my creases can go either way. My folds will go either way I choose for them to go. And then I take my bone folder and I smoosh it down again on the edges. All I'm doing is just making it so that it bends nicely. In whichever way I want it to go, it'll bend now. Whichever way I want it to bend. But we still have one piece of paper. We folded it in half. Then we folded it in quarters. And then we folded it in eighths. So we got one eighth, one, two eighths, three eighths, four eighths, five eighths, six eighths, seven eighths, and eight eighths. And eight eighths each equals one if you want to know your algebra that's your lesson <laughs> that's all you get that's your tip <laughs> so um janet's going to bed mm -hmm. yep she'll 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 drift off here in a minute so very simple all we did was fold okay now we're going to start getting into the book. You know, we're going to start making the book a little bit. So you're going to take each corner and you're going to, you're going to have that line right there. And you're going to fold and make a little dog ear on this corner. It makes it half of a triangle when you fold it in to that line. Can you see the triangle that I made right there? And then when you fold it, it makes a it makes a nice line this direction. So there's there's two triangles here. You're going to make a triangle on all four corners. All four corners. So I'm done it there. Now I'm going to do it over here, and you just fold it to this to the you put the the top edge to the side edge to make a triangle. And if you have a problem with it, just take your time. And I'm just going to turn my paper around and make the other two. I'm making four triangles. Now, in a minute, we're going to be doing we're going to be doing some more folding, and I want you to know that these folds could go in either direction. So I'm going to make my uh, triangles folded fold back because I want them to fold either way, just like we did the other folds. They will fold either way now because we creased them, and with our bone folder. So I'm doing the same thing with these. Now I'm going to ask you to lay your paper down <clears throat> with your corners up, upward. They're facing up. All four corners are folded up, okay? And if I were to move this in and leave my corners up on the up and fan fold it just one time, I'm going to have... I'm going to have, this is called a mountain, okay? This is a valley where the fold is on the, the corner of the corners. That's a valley. This is a mountain. The next one's a valley, and then the next one is a mountain. Valley, mountain, and valley. So I have three mountains here, and then I have two ends. The ends uh, are singled. The mountains are doubled. Am I making sense? <laughs> well, you know, it's been awful warm over here. <laughs> I could stand a little bit of cold, cool air. 
Okay. Well, if you were to fold everything together, now you have one of those those fans that you have that you used to make in church <laughs> and use the fans out of the bulletin. That's what we've got here. We've got we've got this together again, okay? Now I'm going to open one side and it doesn't matter about right or left. It will it'll work out. And then I've got this mountain here and I'm going to fold that mountain into a triangle. Okay? And I'm going to crease it down. So I've got the three three mountains right here the three mountains one two three I got the two ends right here and those corners are folded the corners are folded and then I folded one of the mountains to make a rooftop okay so I'm folding that edge out the end out I'm folding the first mountain over I'm folding the first mountain over and I've got the middle mountain, which is the second mountain. And I'm going to fold it down and make a triangle too. Just like that. And I'm going to do the same thing. We'll turn the page and I'm going to make another corner on the last mountain. And then we have, then we have the end the end paper that already has the folded corner on the outside very simple now i'm going to go backwards and i'm going to fold fold my mountain tops out and fold them back the other direction and make my house top the next the other side that's so that i can bend it either way you see it's going to make it easy to work with so i'm just teaching you this so that it'll be easy to make so I'm going to fold this mountain the opposite direction, make a rooftop, turn the page, and fold this mountain the other direction, and make a rooftop this direction. So when you close your book, it looks like this. Okay, now we're going to turn it around and do the other side. You've got three mountains here that need to be folded to a triangle. So I'm going to do that. And now I can go a little faster because you, you know what I'm doing. Now you may not, the first time, you may not go this fast. But I think that, I don't think there's anybody going to, doing it with me. There, everybody's watching. Unless they didn't tell me they were doing it. I would go slow for them. Slower if you need me to. So I'm making the triangles on both ends ends of my little bookie my little blizzard book and i got another triangle here and i'm going to open it back up there's the end and i'm going to fold the roof top to the other side direction to make that crease go either way and trust me this is this 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 is a um it's to help you. You don't have to do what I'm doing, but this is going to help you when we get to the next step. So I took my three mountains and I'm folding them back the other direction to crease my paper in both directions. And I still come out with the same picture here. Like a pencil. It's like a pencil. Okay, we got this pencil thing going on. Okay. Now this is the this is this is a little tricky. So I'm going to ask you to just just listen. I'm going to gently fold my roof tops up. Okay. I'm the three in the middle. They're going to be folded up for just this just a smidgen. And then I'm going to open this up just a little bit. Okay, I'm not going. I can open it up all the way, but I want it to be an accordion, so you can see what I'm doing next. This is where uh, we, we we do a little reverse. Um, you've got the three mountains that you have to work with, and this was the this was the uh, the triangle top that made the house top. Well, you're going to open the triangle up and then you're going to 
push it under to the opposite direction. This is the top of the mountain, and we folded a triangle. You're going to open that up and push it under the belly under and fold it in it and because we've been working with the folds it goes really easy it goes under real easy you do all three mountains on this end you push it down and close it push it down and close it you've got the two ends you've got your two pencil ends and you fold them and you still have that pencil in but the folds are done under now I'm going to do the other side. Just gently uh, open the accordion. You've got the three mountains on top. You're going to push that these triangles down underneath and grab a hold of it. You push this next one down and underneath and then grab a hold of it. There it is. Now I got it. You push it down and grab a hold of it. This is like origami. You push the last mountain underneath and grab a hold of it. And you fold it and you still have your pencil. We're almost done. Almost done. So now when we turn open up and turn our page... We have something what I call a rooftop. And on that rooftop, you're going to take, this is the line across the two corners here, the, the straight line across. And I'm drawing that so that you can understand what I'm trying to do. But I'm going to fold the rooftop down. I'm going to fold the rooftop down and you have a straight line right here there's a straight line all the way across you're going to turn the page and you've got another roof and we're going to fold it straight across from here to here and it will fold it will fold down so there's another rooftop folded down that's the second one and here's the third one <clears throat> And you're going to fold it down across, straight across. And then the last one is your fourth one. And you're going to fold it straight across and fold it down. Close your book. And you have almost finished. This is the end results on this side. Now we're going to do the other side. And doesn't matter if you fold it this way or this way, you, whichever way you open it. You can open it the opposite direction. It will work out, I promise. So I'm going to fold the rooftops down on the other end. And there are four rooftops. There's one. There's two. There's three. And there's four. Now you have just completed the spine of your blizzard book right there. That's it in a nutshell. If you want to go ahead and take your bone folder and smush it down some, that would be great. You can use the end of your scissors uh, and just rub it down like that. You can use a knife, uh, like a butter knife. Uh, you don't want to tear your paper. You just want to crease it real good. And you can, you know, you can continue to crease it. And and it will be nice and crisp. And it will be user friendly. Then we're going to go back to this paper that we, we've already cut up. We've got four pieces of paper folded in half. Right? I'll crease them. So these four pieces of paper are what we're going to play with next. So we open the blizzard book, open both rooftops, and place your paper in 
in the gutter <laughs> of your spine, which is where the line is. You could open your paper up and place it on the line. Fold your rooftops back down, and the points will be where the fold is on your paper. I'm going to draw a line just so that you can see where my fold is on the paper. I put this line on this line. And then when I fold my house tops, rooftops down, I just make sure the point is on the line here and here. And it will fold shut in my spine. And look, it's not going to come out. You could rip it out. But that's the whole purpose. We want it to stick. We want it to stay. So it's holding the paper down inside. We turn that page. We open the roof here in the bottom roof. And then we take the next piece of paper and we put it on the line. Fold the top. Fold the bottom roof. And turn the page. And now we've got two. So we open the roof at the top. Open the roof at the bottom. Insert the next sheet. Shut the roof. Shut the roof. And turn the page. And there's one last more to do where you used up your fourth half sheet. We have used up three pieces of paper. Three pieces of paper to make this book. And there it is. Okay, that's your blizzard book. You can take this anywhere you want to take it to, okay? You can you can write in it, you can draw in it, you can sketch in it, you can paint in it. Wherever you want to take go, you have a blizzard book. You can decorate it now. If you want to put something on the outside that would require another sheet, half a sheet of paper, and you can glue it. Uh, on the outside and just fo fold it over top glue it on here and glue it on here and then it stays and that's your it's the it's the uh, book cover for your your other book so i still have four pages even though i put an outside cover on it and you can make this at any size if you use the same size paper Okay. Any questions? Have I lost anybody? This is my sample. One sheet of paper. You start with four corners. The four corners. You've got eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight equal parts folded. The outside stay, go up. And then you have three mountains in the middle. Three, one, two, three mountains in the middle. You, you take the folded part and you push them under, push them under, and push them under. And then you've got the beginnings of your, your spine. You open it back up and you fold the house top down, house top up, fold it. Turn to the next page, house top down, house top up, turn the next page to the very end. And the fourth one is the same. And there is your spine for your blizzard book, your traveling blizzard book. Okay. I suggest you use typing paper at first till you get the hang of it then you can go with a thicker scrapbook paper and you just have to take your time and you might have to use um uh you just have to take your time with when you're doing your creases so that you keep them straight and then you have to bone fold them down real good and then you remember I had you fold it back the other way so that they they would bend in either direction. And that's what makes them uh, not flimsy, but uh, easy to work with. Okay. So, there you go. There's your dinner. I am going to take and put a rubber band around my blizzard books. Till next time. 
So I've taught you the dolls this week. I taught how to make paper dolls and how to do blizzard books this week. So now we can get back to our, yeah, 12 by 12 is fine. Cut it in half. For your um, for your half sheets, but you need you need three sheets of scrapbook paper, three pieces of twelve by twelve. The first twelve by twelve, you're going to make you're going to make this thing. This is this is one sheet of paper. Hi, Sharon. So so one piece of paper is going to you're going to fan fold it, you know, into the eight sections. And then the other two pieces of 12 by 12, you cut in half and fold in half. And that becomes your pages. So re all I can say is review the, the video. And if you, you know, just watch the video a couple times and you'll understand. You need one page for the spine and two pieces of paper for the inserts. If you want to put that kind of paper in there. So, I'm going to put it away and if somebody has another question. And if you do this later on and you still have a question, I'll demo it real quick for you. Okay? So, there won't be any problems if you uh, don't get it. There are other videos on the internet that explain the process. I learned it off of the internet as well. Okay? All right. Let's do a panda. <laughs> Let's paint this panda. This panda <clears throat> is going to be using a technique with Q-tips. Uh, Q tips. So I got me a couple of Q-tips out here. We're going to be painting with them. We are going to be needing... Um, she has a light purple, a dark purple, a medium purple, and a pink. And then she's got yellow and a gray and a black and a medium gray. So I'm going to, uh, I don't know if I have all of these colors. So let's, let me see. I've got a dark purple. And I do have a light purple, and I can make light purple by adding white. This one's watered down, so I might have to just make my white light purple. And I'm going to be needing the black. And then she's got a shadow here and here and here. And that is done with a lighter purple or a gray even. So I'm going to try the gray. I got a gray. And then the background is another type of purple. Oh, I'm wondering if, oh, but it, then she uses pink. Okay, so she uses a soft pink. I've got this pink. And then I think I need a rose pink. Let's see if I can find me a rose. That didn't have much in it. Uh I need a light pink and a light purple and a yellow. And I'm going to use, she's got a bright yellow. This is yellow flame. That's pretty bright. Uh, it's really a lighter style, but I'm going to use this yellow. I've got this gray and I've got black. And then I have a dark purple. And then I need a lighter purple. And then I need a dark pink and a light pink. So I'm going to go down here, see if I can't find me another bottle with a lighter pink. I've got more paint down here. Got tons of paint. And I can make it if I have to. But I think I have some.
So there would be my light pink and here's my dark pink. I got two pinks. I can still add a little more water to it. And I think, I think that's all I will need at this moment. So I'm going to use, do my acrylics with this. And I do have a palette. So I will add to the top of my palette all of my paints. So the first thing we do is we paint our, um, we sketched it, and now we're going to paint our, our panda real quick in in all of the colors she's got black and then she's got some purple on top of the black she's got the white and then some lighter purple on the for his cheeks and then she's got more black and a darker purple on the ears so we should be able to do that i don't need the yellow just yet but i am going to need the purple And I'm going to need the white. And I'm going to make some light purple. I can use this little purple over here. It's a lighter one. Okay, and then I want a dark pink and a light pink. Everybody doing okay? Hi, Tanya. Question above. Question above. Thank you, Cheryl. I'm sorry. Great demo. Okay, you thick of paper. I got that one. Magazine for ACT cards. Yes. You can use your magazine and, and look for women in your in your magazines. You just need two women. But they need to be kind of small. You know what I mean? Let me show you a couple of my women. There's my dark pink and my light pink. And I can put a little bit of white in this one if I want to make it a little bit lighter. So that won't be too bad. I can do that just in case. Because we want to we want to be able to see. And then I got black. And I will need more than that. I'm sure of it. Maybe not. And I'm going to use, I uh, don't know, but I'm going to put gray out just in case. I need a little bit of gray. Not sure. And I will be using the yellow. And not really a whole lot of yellow. But I'll put that much out for my yellow. Um. Remember, uh, Melissa, how little my women are on my cards? They fit on my cards. The women fit on my cards. So that's how tiny of the women you want. And they can be in commercials, uh, in, a, in an article. It could be just a picture of a face of a woman. Anything you want, Melissa. Okay? Make it this size. Yeah, you can use you can use magazines. Any kind of a woman. You can draw your women <laughs> if you want. Oh, let me get my phone real quick. And that's sometimes Cheryl messages me and I don't have my phone in here. Let me go get it.
That way, if I watch it, it when Cheryl, when I'm not behaving, Cheryl messages me and says, now, Beth, calm down. <laughs> or she'll say, question above. So, so I'm sorry. I didn't have my phone in here. So now we're good. We, we use all of our technical devices for all the support we can get. We need all the help we can get. So there. Let's see. Come on. There we go. Okay. So here's my paint, and I'm going to use my brush first. I'm not ready for my Q-tips just yet. The first thing is to paint the panda and paint the background. So that's what I'm going to do. And it's it's uh, trying to decide. I'm going to use my round brush which is this one, and I probably could use a little bit bigger one. Uh, I could probably use my bigger square one. This one. Okay. Two cards. Two cards, Tan Tanya. You mail me two of your cards and I will mail you back two two different cards that's right Cheryl you tell them honey there is no bad question there you go there you go I used a, cl a clothing catalog you know with models and stuff in it and you can get free magazines if you you know some some um, a lot of the companies are putting their their catalogs online so they can do away with the mailing list but some of your bigger companies will still are still mailing the catalogs and i tell you another one is a wig if you can get a wig catalog the women looks absolutely perfect in their little wigs on those <laughs> they look so pretty <laughs> i like using the wig magazine hi mitzi but they're free. I get my magazines free. And I ordered a, a new one yesterday. And it's called The American Girl, which is the doll, the little doll that's like an Amer all American. And they have her set up in Western outfits and different outfits. And I ordered that catalog. And I thought that I could use the, the American Girl dolls, you know, in some of my art. You never know. <laughs> I do. I get busy and I can give, get off on a tangent. So, so um, once I get started, it'll go pretty fast. I'm going to go ahead and paint, paint the outside first. And I'm going to use my light purple. And I do have my little thing right here. This is my page protector uh, for when I I uh, it helps protect your pages in your book so that you don't get paint on the next page. So I'm just going to go around and do and do a, a little a little purple around the edge of my panda, and I'm just going to go around the what I've sketched. With my paintbrush. This is acrylic paint. So if you go over the line. 
it won't hurt anything because we're going to be doing the bear the next in in a minute. We'll be doing the bear, and we can fine tooth those edges a little bit better. So that won't be a problem. So I'm just doing the outside here around the panda. Very good. There you go. That was easy. Just paint around the panda. It's like ring around the rosy. Cheryl's turned into a, a nice little announcer. <laughs> She's announcing everything. <laughs> and it and I'm sure it helps everybody that just come in. <laughs> you missed out on it, but you you but you're not missing out for long. You can go back and watch the replay. We did uh, we talked about the dolls, we talked about the ACT cards. If you want to do an ACT trade. You have to have two ACT cards made up and 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 mailed out to me by June the 30th. And then you send me two cards and I'll send you two cards back. But they'll be different cards. And uh, so far I have 13 playing along in the ACT game. So that's good. That is good. And uh, if you need directions on ACTs, uh, you can go back to Tuesday's Tuesday's video. I talked about it quite a bit and uh, showed you what mine looked like. And I, at the beginning of this video, I showed you what mine looked like and how, how I've come along on mine. And, uh, and I also gave you a demo of some of the ACTs in my private collection. In my private collection. So, how's that look? So, then I'm going to go into the black and the white. <laughs> it's a little origami. The... the uh, the trade or the blizzard book. I showed you how to do that today. And it is um, like an origami. You have to fold it. And... So Mitzi, you've seen tr blizzard books before, haven't you? Yes. Our theme for the ACT cards is power women. And that's us. We're powerful women. We're powerful women. And I'll, I'll shut mine are laying right here. I'm still working on them, but I, I painted the background and I stenciled the backgrounds and I put a stickers in them for my new sticker book and then a woman and a word, power woman. And uh, they're all, all like this, except this one, this one's blue. I'll keep her, I'll keep her for my mustache. But I, but I also made my ACT cards out of tissue boxes. Okay. I, I, it's, you know, so these were just tissue boxes that I cut into my cards. Or you can use a deck of cards. Playing cards are perfect as well. Hi, Deborah. Deborah might play. She might play with, with us doing ACT cards, Deborah. We're going to have an ACT swap. If you want to play, if you want to do them, you have to make up two ACT cards. Yeah. Send me two cards. The, the theme is power women. And, and a power word on it. You need to put one power word on it or something. Like, you know, you are attractive and you are accepted. 
and you are shiny and you are beautiful. These are power words. You are strong. And I need two of your cards and then I will mail you back two more. Okay, I'll put you on the list. Mitzi, are you going to play? Okay, just two cards. Nothing real, nothing real uh, stressful. Nothing stre stressful. And just mail them to me before June the 30th. And, uh, and I'll put you on the list so I won't lose you. Okay, you're down. So that makes us 15. 15 of us are playing. Woohoo! The more the merrier. <laughs> you're welcome, hon. So now back to my panda. I'm going to go ahead and paint it black. And then pretty soon we're going to be doing the um, Q-tips. We're going to do the polka dots. Woohoo! This shouldn't be take too long. I'm a thinking it shouldn't. But you know me, I can drag it out if I have to. <laughs> I can drag it out. If I don't like it, I'll play with it till I do. And this panda is coming out of the acrylic painting book. I did it last year acrylic animals by megan wells and uh a lot of the girls bought these books so you all may have if you were involved with me then um there was four amigos four of us painting together in this book last year that was me colin craps uh kathy berg and um debbie epps and debbie was our uh, Debbie kind of leaded, leaded us. She's she's an art teacher, and she does professional arting. And uh, I say that in a, in the most complimentary way because she she sells her art. She she's good enough to do art shows and things like that. And she's really good, and she can do the sketching for us. And she would post the sketchings on the, on our Facebook pages. And then we would uh, sketch our sketch our subject, and then we would paint them together. And we had such a good time last year doing it. And it was funny because everybody has their own uh, style of doing things. And and uh, some you know some of us you know had to go rogue, and you know how I go sometimes I can get kind of carried away, but. I, you know, you come up with ideas and to do stuff to your to your animals and put jewelry on them and <laughs> stuff like that. So anyway, we had a lot of fun and we did most of the books out of it, most of the pictures out of this book. And there's about five of them that are left. So we are doing that right now. And the panda, the panda was one that we did not get to do. I did a panda not too long ago out of another book. But this one's done in a particular style with the uh, Q-tips. And, uh, and I'm trying to follow the directions that Megan Wells is giving us in this book. So we're doing it for fun. We're doing it because we want to. So uh, the body is black. done with that and then the eyes are black but I think I'm going to go ahead and uh, paint my white first and I remember a time that I painted it all white and then I could never get the eyes black it kept turning gray because it kept it kept drinking the white underneath. So I'm not going to put any white on the eyes or the nose. 
or the ears. So, but I am going to put white everywhere else. And since my brush is already black, I'm going to go ahead and make my, do my ears. Dog alert. There's a little ear. Yep, I don't want to put, you don't want to put black paint on top of wet white paint. Okay, just, oh, hi, Tanya. Tanya just popping in to say hi. I enjoyed your all's uh, show today. That was really cute. And I did watch all of yours. Um, oh, what's it called? <laughs> six by six. Uh, you're calling it something special. Tanya can advertise for me. There, there's a string of six videos. And they're doing them once a month for the next six months. And there's six girls. And each of the girls do, does a video and they each get a packet of six items, the same six items. And it's fun to see how different each one of them uses their items. It's the same six. It's on Wednesdays. And, and uh, they, uh, I, they, their, their, their uh, addresses is in the bottom of the description. So you just do a round robin and you pick one and then you pick this next. There's six, six of them until you go back to the first one and then you've watched them all. And they're all, I don't know, half hour, 45 minutes, maybe, Tanya. Not very long. They're easy to watch. And there's six different artists. And Tanya's in it and Lisa's in it. And Barbara Clark's in it. And then I didn't know the other two girls. So it was nice to see two more newbies that I get to watch now. So, yeah. Okay, Joan's going to be back in a few minutes. Okay. Thank you, Joan. Oh, great. You got my package. You're welcome. Oh, good. Okay. Uh, her son does leather work and... And uh, I sent him a bunch of those black fringes. I sent her a whole box full. I still have more, Joan. <laughs> Let me know how it, keep me posted on what he makes. <laughs> but he does jewelry and things. So, uh, very good, very good. So, uh, yeah, there's a link. Tanya put the link in. Thank you, Tanya. That's awesome. Yes, and Lisa has a link in her video for the other videos as well. It's like a hop. You bounce, you hop from one girl to the next, and they're all doing the same uh, subject. And they're making something out of six items. 30 to 45 minutes. That's perfect. That was a good, that was nice. You know, it didn't last too long. Yeah, I like that. And I was able to watch all six of y'all boom, boom, boom. So, because it didn't last too, you know, was it wet, you know, didn't go over. Same items, but different artists, different pages, different designs. Cute, 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 what everybody came up with. They were very original and very, very cute. Okay. Thank you, Tanya. It was still, you know, it was, no, they, I don't think any of them were too long. No, I didn't think that. I thought they were just fine. But I think it also because she was new to me, you see, and I was interested in learning more about her. Because I'd never seen her before. So it was good. It was good.
Fun, fun, fun. There's one eye. Here's the other eye. And then a nose, doing the nose. And I will do the smile in a minute. He's got a little smile going on down here. And I think that's it. I think that's it. And we'll put some shadow on this. I got some shadow going here. Okay, here's the black. Okay, she's going to go to work. Bye, Tanya. See you soon. Thanks for coming in. Okay. Hi, Joyce Boring. Hadn't seen you yet. Joyce might want to play the ACT game. Are you up to doing two ABC, A, ATC cards, Joyce? Are you up to it? Glenda's giving me thumbs up. Cheryl's giving me some thumbs up. Okay, I didn't see you come in, sweetie. Hi. Just glad to see you. <laughs> I'm always glad to see you, Joyce. Now, Joyce and I have been doing a butterfly book together. Are you still working on your butterfly book, Joyce? I think this eye's too thin. <laughs> I'm going to make it thicker. That's better. Okay. Hi, Lisa. Your show was good today, Lisa. You and Tanya were good. Tanya was just in. Are you all tag teaming? <laughs> okay. Well, Joyce, I only need two, okay? 
two power women so you don't have to make a whole lot just need two and i was just telling everybody about the hop and tanya put the link in and if you want to put it in too lisa please do uh, about the hop and i was explaining that there were six girls six artists and um and they each get the same little kit with six items in it and they do something with those items they either make a journal cover lisa made a cover for her journals and then the other girls made journal pages to go into their journal so they're going to be doing this for like six or seven months and so they should have at least six pages in a little journal book that they did together and they're and it's got a snazzy name called six i don't know something six it's a six o'clock hop <laughs> and the and uh, each each of the six women do a little short video on their page and they they attach them to the each other so that when you watch one, you, when you're done watching that one, you click on the next link and it'll take you straight through all six women. The same six Wednesday, hashtag same six Wednesday, and uh, and they're having fun and they are. They were really they were really cute and I I met some new people I'd never seen before, Lisa. So uh, I knew. I knew you and Tanya and Barbara Clark, and um, but I didn't know the other girls. So that was really cool. So thank you, Lisa. If you want to put the link in again, the girls the girls will get it. I'm gonna go ahead and do my white now, and get my white down on my face, and then we can start getting into some of these highlighters. He's already white. The paper's white. But we'll put it down anyway. He needs a good base background. Needs a background. Almost done. It doesn't take long to get the white down. Because you can't tell where it is and where it starts and where it ends. Somewhere like that. We're getting there. Okay.
Okay, good, good. A little bit more right there. So, I think I got it all. Okay, thanks, thanks, Lisa. There's the site if you want to watch it. It's uh, it's easy watching, and just remember what you, whichever one you start with. The next lady will be in the description underneath the video. You click on the next. They're all in a row. So you just keep clicking on the top one after you do each one. And then they that, that name will roll onto the bottom. And it's like a little round robin. And you'll see six different videos. And they're not very long. So they're like 30 to 45 minutes long. And it's easy listening, easy watching on your eyes. It's, it's, it's fun to see what they're going to do. With the same items. Polly Panda. Okay. <laughs> okay, Cheryl. <laughs> Polly Panda. She's going to be Polly Panda. Now, while the white is drying, I'm going to get into my purple a little bit. And she's got some highlighting uh, on the shoulders and on the tops of the ears. But she didn't spend a lot of time on it. So uh, I'm just going to just do some purple here on top of his shoulders. Like maybe that's where the light is coming in. I don't know. It's not going to be all over. It's just going to be kind of. And she just she doesn't really coat it on there. She kind of rubs it in. It's kind of rubbed on there. Rubbed in. But this is kind of a shadow on the panda and in this shadow and it looks kind of purpley. And uh, she just she just kind of rubs it over and works it in a little bit. Hit and miss it. So it's not completely covered, but you can see some deep purple and this is going to show through when we do the uh, q-tip technique here in a minute it's going to add character to it it's going to add character so that's that So I'm going to do the ears a little bit on the ears. Like that. This is a dark violet purple. And again, we're still got to do a, a Q-tip technique. So you'll be surprised to see all these underneath. And then she's got some light uh, purple for the bottoms of his cheeks and the shadow of his cheeks. So I'm going to use this lighter shade of purple over here that has some white in it. And I don't need a whole lot. I don't need a whole lot. So I'm going to wipe some of this off of my brush. <clears throat> I can always add more. Uh, I'm going to wipe half of this purple off. And then I'm going to go right under this eye with it and give him some cheeks, rosy cheeks in the shadows. And again, we're going to go over all of this in uh, with Q-tips here in just a minute. And again on this side, and I wiped half of the paint off. So 
keep that in mind. Very, just very lightly using this. And the, the white paint is kind of, is kind of dry, but it's also soft, still soft. So there's a little bit of softness there and that's okay because it blends in. This is a real light purple. And then his mouth is like this. kind of a frown but it's this is just shadowing his mouth it's shadowing it I'm just uh, just doing his mouth and uh, and again we're going to be doing some uh, q-tips here in a minute so that's good. That's a, just about what she's got. I might have got a little bit higher here, but that won't hurt anything. And uh, and there is a mouth. And I can use this brush for that. So I'll go ahead and put his little mouth in. And it's kind of like... It's a happy little frown. He's a happy little guy. Something like that. He's not unhappy, but he's he's just sitting there. It's Polly, isn't it, Polly Panda? She's just kind of sitting there. And while I've got my eyeliner here, while I've got this little round brush, I'm going to go ahead and attempt to do the eyes with the white. And then it has a either a black or purple center. But this, this white will uh, soak up some of the black. So I'm going to put an eye in. It may not soak up too much, but I'm afraid it will. I might as well just accept it. It's going to soak it up. But uh, I'm going to put centers in that. But I'm going to put two or three coats of white. Because it's going to soak it up. And I just have to let each layer dry. And keep putting down another layer of white. Uh, you can see it's soaking up. It's turning a little blue. And so I will let that dry. And I'll put another coat of white on it. I might even use the whiteout pen. Uh, that might work too. So anyway, I'm going to turn the page. This is step two. One and two. We sketched. And we painted our panda. That was the hardest part. And now we're going to start using our Q-tips. And she says, start adding your dots. You don't have to be perfectly round dots. They just use a cotton swab and create some dots. Or you can even use the end of your, your pencil brush, your pencil uh, eraser. And you or the end of your end of your brush. What well, it doesn't matter how you do it. So uh, three, four, five, and six are dots. Um, she used a, a a yellow on the white, and she used a pink on the background, and she used a light purple on the black. So, without further ado, <laughs> where are my Q-tips? Here they are. Okay. So, I'm going to start with the yellow on the face, on the white. Yellow on the white, not the black, but the white. And this is what we're going to do. <laughs> so, we're going to sit here and doop, 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 fastest. As fast as I can. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> Pretty sure. I would have never dreamed up these collar combinations. That's what makes these books so fun when you work with other people. And you see their ideas and see how they do things. It really... Uh, opens up our, our artistic minds and this is an experience that I've never would have done by myself so I'm so glad you guys are here with me 
and that we have this art book to to have and to play with. <laughs> so happy. Makes me happy. Now she's she's put trying to decide if she's got yellow on the uh and she does. I think she's got yellow on the cheeks. I think they're yellow. They turn a different color, but they're yellow. And this this is a Walmart Q-tips. Walmart Dollar Tree or something. Nothing fancy. 300 in a box. They last forever. And I don't think they're over the grin, her grin, too much. I'll go around the grin. So you can really, doesn't take too long to do it all. I thought it was going to be one, one dot, one dot. No, it's not like that. You get, the, it soaks it up and you can do two or three dots in a row. So that makes it nice. It's not one at a time. Get the edges pretty good. See, we're going. We're, we're still going to do something on top of this, and I guess it's white dots next, on top of the yellow. But we gotta let it dry first. So how are we? There's a bunch of dots there, filling in the gaps here and there. And just about done. And on the black, she uses that light purple. The same light purple on her on her on her face on her jaws. Um, so that's good. And I think that's about it. Looks pretty. Looks like yellow chicken pox to me. <laughs> yellow pan poly panda pox. That's right, Cheryl. She's got poly panda pox. I love it. Okay, I'm just going to turn my, my Q-tip over and go right into the purple and do the black. It's a light purple. And I could go ahead and do another coat on his her eyes. The the white has turned to blue. So I'll do another coat there. Might have to make some more purple, light purple up. And on the nose. And all over his chest. Very redundant. <laughs> Hi, Colleen. Hi, honey. Hi, Norma. Norma, we're painting a panda. Look what we're doing, Norma. <laughs> we're painting a panda. <laughs> Have you been watching me paint some of my other pictures, Norma? We're doing the sketchbook 
uh, we've been working in the sketchbook quite a bit. And I fixed my book today. I'll show you guys. I'll have to take a break. I have to show Norma because she's the one who gifted me the book. We've been working in this book. It's been so much fun. Best book ever. We've been sketching along all, all for the past couple of months. We've been working in this book. And it's got all of the animals. There's 75 different animals in here. And they they have 10 steps to, to sketching this animal. And it starts with the face. And she goes each step by step by step by step by step until you have created this little animal. And, um, and I did this one. And I'll show you some of them. We'll take a break. Break. Chat break. Here's the uh, seahorse. And then I watercolored them. And Sharon, Norma, Sharon Lombard sent me some gouaches, gouache paint. So I, I, I've been using gouache. I love gouache. I thought it was just something. I didn't think it was anything to brag about, but it is. <laughs> and here's the little chameleon. And Cheryl's been writing poems. And then we do, and they've been naming them, of course. Yeah, they're cute. And then as I get over here, uh, I've got some more. These are all loose. I better hold. I better hold the. I'm going to put them in this book though. But uh, we did a uh, octopus and a little <laughs> meerkat, a fox, a camel. We've been painting, and then I did a couple of pencil drawings. And there's a llama. We have one girl in here. All she had was pencils, so we we did pencils with her. And she did a good job. There's the horse. And these, this is done in pencil and oil. Have you ever done that, Norma? You do your picture in pencil and then you take a Q-tip and dip it in oil, like games Gamsel oil. I used uh, Skin So Soft. And then you smear the pencils marks. It's really cool and it smells wonderful. Yeah, we did. And there's a bird. Here's the bird. Here's the parakeet. <laughs> yeah, we all read Typeanese. We do. We know our Typeanese. And this one, I think, is my favorite. Flossie Mae. She's done in gouache. She looks really good. So we've been really, really busy. We've done all these paintings and I'm going to, I got this book. I'm going to uh, put them all in this book. I did I uh, repurposing this book and I put in a new spine with uh, double sided tape. So I peel the tape off and pop the picture in and boom, we're in. <laughs> these two are already in permanently. So it's going to be a nice flip book with my paintings in it. It's going to be cool. So we've been we've been playing. Yeah, it was really fun. It was the wolf and the bird, the parakeet we did in the with the oil. If you want to go back and look, and and they use this games a games the oil. It's a different. It's some unusual name like that, something like that. Games, games of oil, in arting, and it's some kind of a spirit uh, that breaks the pencil down so that it smears. But Skin So Soft works pretty good too. <laughs> we like Skin So Soft. It was our. It was in our budget. I know it. We've been really pumping them out, buddy. Gams of oil. Thank you, Nancy. That's the oil. And uh, it's it's a mineral spirit, but it doesn't have an odor to it. And it's what a lot of the artists use. And um, so it was it was okay. It's okay. So anyway, I gotta make a little bit more of this 
purple. We've been having fun. I, I will be needing more white. So I'm going to get this white over here and some of this purple. We've been just having a lot of fun, and uh, I've been I've been using all of the uh, all of our books. And of course, we did we've already done the series of the the paint party book that we used that you gave me, Norma. We we did all, almost all of these. We did uh, nine nine of these out of twelve. And these were a lot of fun. This book was really good, too. It, it was like 10 or 12 steps to do a picture. And, um, and, it, and it was very nice. It was, it was it, each step by step. So this painting party book was a hit as well, Norma. So I'm, I'm going to get me another one of these in different pictures. <laughs> I'll, I'm, I'm going to go on the hunt. And uh, I got some extra money coming in to me. Uh, my mommy, my mommy left me a little bit, so I'm going to buy me a couple of more books as soon as I pick them out. I'm going to get Joe to take me up to uh, Barnes and Noble bookstore and uh, get me some more books up there. But uh, so now we're just painting, painting this panda with our Q-tips. So how have you been, Norma? You been okay? You doing good? Is Branson open up yet? I think they're slowly opening up. Everything's slowly opening. All is well. Well, that's good. It's been crazy. It's been a crazy time. So, anyway, I'm mixing this up down here a little bit and it's working out well so I think I'm done with that I got to do these ears Okay, one more to go. I don't think there's a right or wrong on doing the Q-tip thing. Just do it. Okay. So I'm going to, we did the yellow. Now the background, uh, she starts off with the dark pink. And then a light pink on top. So I'm going to go ahead and do that on the background. And this is the background. This turns out to be really fun, guys. You all need to try this. It's unusual colors. Uh, I just wouldn't think about putting these colors together like this. 
But as you can see, it's coming along. Yeah, we're at, we're going to do an ACT swap. If anybody wants wants to join in, we're doing two ACT cards. Branson is open and tourists are back. Thank goodness. Goodness. Yes. That's great. Uh, the subject is power women. And so there should be a woman on your card. And a power word. Like, you are great. You are fabulous. And... Happy words on your page, on your card. And uh, I just need two cards. The subject is Power Women. Put your name and date on the back. If you want to put your address there, that'd be nice for the person who gets your card. And I will send you back two different cards from two other girls. So I will round robin the cards. So that you won't get the same ones back. Which makes it nice. Okay. I think I'm done with this. I'm happy with that. Then I need a light pink. And I've got this to stir up. And I am going to need some more white. For um, the face. She goes over it again with white. Everything gets like two colors. And the purple gets another, gets black put back on the, on the black. So I'll get that out too. A little more black. There we go. So, let me go ahead and let that pink dry, and I'm going to do a light pink on top of it. So, I'm going to go to the white and do the face again. And just random, it doesn't matter if they hit on top of the yellow, it's random dots. You kind of want to hit hit part of the yellow uh, so that it peeks through the background. I got bubbles. Get rid of the bubbles. So I'm kind of keeping it straight on where I'm going. I'm going to do around the nose and the mouth. Okay. And I kind of got to look where I'm going here. So hang in there. I'm concentrating so I don't mess up. I got to stay in, in line, keep my lines going here so I don't overdo it. 
almost done with the face I still need to put some white in the eyes I can do that with the q-tip it keeps soaking up the underneath tones Okay. Okay. I can't tell. I can't tell. But we can always go back later if we think that something isn't enough we can always kind of go around afterwards if we feel like it's not if it's too much yellow or something I can go back with more white later so I'm going to leave the white now I'm going to go back to the black and do uh, over the black and I'm going to start with the eyes some cute tip Pox. We're doing pox. So that's what we're doing. Okay. Let's see the ears. I got to stay focused here. Hi, Allie Kay. <laughs> if there's anybody else that wants to join in the ACT swap, let me know. You can, we've got till June the 30th. I need to have them mailed two cards, just two ACT cards mailed to me by June the 30th. And the subject is power women. I've talked about it at the beginning of each of my videos uh, on Tuesday and today both. If you need to, uh, if you want a little more details, I explain how to do the ACT cards. But if you know how to do ACT cards, you can do two cards real easy. Just power women. I used a, uh, a, a clothing magazine catalog for my women. And then I put a power word on them. Like you are terrific. You are bubbly. You are beautiful. Power words. Just two cards, and then you will get two different cards back. And I did show off my ACT book that I have, that I have a collection of ACTs in. And I showed, I showed, I kind of did a flip through just a little bit. If you want to go back and see that some of the girls are new and they're giving it a shot they're going to try to do it and I think it's going to be fun they're going to really enjoy it getting something in the mail I'm a poking. I'm a putting polka dots down. We got the poly panda pox. She's going to be cute.
and I can't really watch chat and do this at the same time. I got to see where I'm poking. I got to see where I'm a dipping. But it won't be long. I'll be done with this one. I got to do another coat on the outside. Okay, I think that's that's it. Oh, dog alert. That's Nora. That's my Nora. She's something else, I tell you. She won't let me hug on her or hold her or anything like that. So the other night I cornered her down. I pinned her down on the bed and I wouldn't let her get up. And she wanted to sprout. She wanted to spring and go forth, but I wouldn't let her. And I said, no, I'm going to hold you. I'm going to hug on you. And I did. I lounged on her for about 10 minutes <laughs> and just loved on her. And, and I've been trying to get a hold of her feet and rub her feet so that she will let me do her nails. I want to do her toenails eventually. So I had to, I've been rubbing on her toes whenever I can to let her know that I'm not going to hurt her toes. So um, that was an experience, but she couldn't get away. I had a lock hold. I had a, I had a choke hold on her. <laughs> Okay, now the next one is a light pink around the, uh, the, the outer part, and then I'm going to turn the page. I think I've done it. I'm still wanting more white on the white, on the, on the, uh, the eyes. So let me, uh, I'm going to dry my eyes, and maybe if I dry it real good, I can get a good white going here. Now I'm going to do the pink. What are you girls doing? Hmm? What you all barking at? They're hanging out looking at me like I'm going to be able to do something for them. What in the world would that be? Huh? <laughs> oh, heavens. I got to show you this one. <laughs> Hang on a minute. If she'll, she'll probably move. Oh, she'll move. That's okay. Here, come here. Come here, Nora. She lays down on her, on the floor. Whenever she lays down, she always lays on her belly. 
always. It's like it's uncomfortable if she doesn't have her legs stretched out. It's always uncomfortable. So she always has her legs stretched out. And it's so funny. She's so cute. Stinking cute. So here we go with the pink. It doesn't take long, but it is time consuming. <laughs> Putting these little dots on there. And I'm able to do a bunch at a time. So that makes it nice. For At first, I thought I was going to, have to do one at a time. Do one dot. <laughs> yep, and one. No, no. The Q-tip holds a little bit of paint. So you can do three or four or five or six dots. And just keep going. Just to keep it going. <laughs> Here we go. It won't be long. Okay. Two, two. Everything's got two dots. Okay. I do want to do his nose again. I want to go over his nose. I want it to be real cute. So I need a little bit of this. And then do this for his nose. Haven't seen Suzanne tonight yet. She must be a sleeping. She sleeps sometimes in the afternoons. See, I've got one of those grinder knee, uh, things for, and I can do Abby's nails. And she, and and your Rufus won't let you, huh? So you have to have it pay to have them done. Well, I'm not going to give up just yet, um, but I might have to as well. You're right. I can't hold them. I can't hold her. She is so strong. Of course, Nora is not the little skipper key I thought she was going to be. She turned into, she's turning into a, a, a German shepherd. She's got more shepherd in her than anything. Nora does. So I'm going to go back over my, uh, my nose with a little more purple. And then I'm going to go back over it that with the black so that some of the purple shows I couldn't see any of the purple and I wanted to I wanted to see the purple so we'll try that Joe's in the house. Hi, ladies. How are you, honey? I'm good. What do you think? Oh, he looks sad. He's. She's thinking. She's a. 
-hmm. This one is the book, and this I put a little grin on mine. Yeah, she kind of. She's got a grin. How'd you put all those little spots on them? Do you do with your Q-tips? Oh, gee whiz, that's a lot of spots. You're not kidding. Hmm. I'm adding more purple to her nose. Sorry. She looks cute with a purple nose. That's better. Yeah. We reversed it. Well, I see the whole crew's on. I think so. Everybody's here. Joyce, Brandon. Norm is he in the house. Norma. Lisa, Joyce. <laughs> okay, I'm going to do, finish that one. And I'm going to get my paintbrush. Miss Allie. And do the nose again. I mean the eyes. Allie Kay, Sharon, Norma, Joyce, Lisa. And... There's more back up in there. There's yeah. 23 of them. And Cheryl. Where's Teresa Cheryl. tonight? I didn't see Teresa. She was up late last night. Ask me how I know. <laughs> I was up too. So we were chatting this morning about 4 o'clock. <laughs> and I said, what? She says, are you still up? And I said, yeah. I said, are you still up too? <laughs> yeah. She was working on her ACT cards and I was too. I was too. So if anybody wants to do ACTs, just let me know. I only need two cards by June the 30th. Let me know if you have any issues. I'll be glad to oblige. You know I will. Oh, that's right. You're right, Allie. <laughs> it's not ACT. That's right. It's ATCs and not ACTs. Mm -hmm. I like to advertise things. You know, if you were to advertise it, it would be ACT, Artist <laughs> Card Trading. <laughs> it's Artist Trading Card. You all know me. <laughs> you know me. I'm always, I'm always saying the wrong words. Okay, my eyes are not going to stay white. They keep sucking up the undercoat. So the only thing I can do, I am going to put a black dot in the middle. Uh, but I might have to let this dry overnight and then and then do another white coat. So, but the, the eyes will have another black dot in the center. And I'm going to turn the page. I've done I've done all of the dotting. Oh, like yeah, no, I did the ears. Um, I think I did it all. That's it. That's the last page. We're done. And we named her Polly Panda. <laughs> so I've got so many dots on here. I'm gonna have to put her name. I think I'll let this dry, and I'll put I'll use the uh, white paint pen. And I can put her name right here on her little arm and sign it and date it down there. Okay, guys, it's 9 o'clock. Woohoo! We got time for another painting. I wanted to give my, uh, give a try out on the watercolor. I don't know how it's going to turn out. It'll be my first time doing it this way. Some more pink on her cheeks. You're right. Okay. Okay. Some more pink. She does, doesn't she? What, Joe? I'm just looking. He's trying to say something. Her He's... eyes are her, her, her. Now, this one here was in the book. This one's oh. the book, yeah. Okay. I just got finished explaining that. I got to let those dry overnight. Yeah. And I'm going to put it black in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. So you can't uh, 
say anything about that. <laughs> so I can't say anything about it. He he says things right after I just explain oh. it. I just explain things already, Joe. Well, I heard you. Yeah, you, you heard me, but you didn't acknowledge it. I was sitting there you weren't listening. You heard it, but you weren't listening. I was studying. Uh huh. Yeah, he heard it all right. It went in one ear and out the other. I don't know what to do about that. Okay, there's her rosy cheeks. I think it looks pretty cool. Looks to me like she's got chicken pox around her eyes. She's, she's Polly Panda Pox. Polly Panda Pox. Mm -hmm. He's over here. Now he's over looking over my shoulder, critiquing my work. Go ahead. Critique away. Oh, I'm just looking. I know. <laughs> Well, you're not you're not hot and sweaty over it because no, you're I'm usually cool. cold yeah cold and clammy looks good <laughs> that's why Joyce says that's why my uh, algebra teacher threw the eraser <laughs> Joe be quiet <laughs> <laughs> hey I had a teacher in the fourth grade and in the person in the front row had a book bag and she picked it up and threw it like a bowling ball down the middle of the Owls. Thanks, Norma. <laughs> I really think I've I've captured it. Looks very good. There's a little probably a little bit more purple, and I did more black over the purple, but that's okay. That's all right. Yeah. And I'm gonna have to let the eyes dry real good overnight. Colors to it. So uh yeah. Your head is much rounder than the one in the book. Yeah. I could go around the edges of, of the face, and I do see white dots around on the uh, circle to give, him, give her a little bit of fluffiness. I see that. And maybe, yeah, a little bit on the ears to make them not so straight. That's good. And now she blends in with the background. Well, but it she's more uh, complete. She's complete. You complete her, Joe. I didn't say to do that. That's a famous line. He doesn't know the line. You know the line, girls? You complete me? <laughs> you complete. Yes, that's a song. If you're going to do it, take it. Take, this and make the, the sides the same, closer to the same. No, it's not supposed to be the same. Oh, she's a wild animal, right? Yeah. She's a bear. Speaking of bears, look what that little bear just walked in. Here's Nora. You little bear. Oh my goodness. I love you. You're so sweet. I don't believe I've ever had a dog like this one. Nope, she's one of a kind. She's the only dog I know that thinks she can hide behind a tree. If she can't see your face and you can't see her face, then she's hiding, even though the back her of the, tail's a wagon. Yeah, her tail's on the <laughs> other side. <laughs> she is so crazy. <laughs> she's the cutest thing I've ever seen, I tell you. Yeah. She's, she's funny. Serious. She's funny. And that, that German and, Shepherd. And she's a German Shepherd. She's yeah. not no skipper key. Yeah. She's too much of a guard dog. She she watch everything and And her, her her voice, her uh, bark is a deep, you know, boy dog dog yeah, bark. You would think it was and, a boy. And she's got a belly button like in her belly and it and and all the hair 
goes to a little point. She's got it's, and it makes her look like a little boy and when she's in the yard. She's got a cow. She's, but she's got a, a girl. Cowlick. Yeah. She's got a cowlick. Her front hair and her back hair come together <laughs> right where your belly button would be. And it, it's a cowlick twist and and, and looks like she's a boy yeah when you when you look at her from a distance you you would think it's a boy but it's not it she's not yeah. no. she's a little girl yeah. but i think she's a tomboy yeah. i think she's a tomboy yeah. she runs every morning for two and three hours <laughs> she yeah. i let her out about five o'clock in the morning yeah. And she is in the backyard running back and forth, back and forth. And she gets her toys and she'll take them all to the side yard. And then the next thing you know, the toys are over on the other side yard. And she let, so we're going to get her some more outdoor toys. And uh, we think she would do be able to do a Frisbee now. So we're probably going to get her a yeah, Frisbee. Yeah, I'm going to get her a Frisbee. Yeah, the bears are, uh, the baby bears are coming out and <laughs> they're breaking away from mama's shoes, apron strings and the baby bears are coming into the towns. I've heard that. We've had them down here too. We had one down here last summer. Yeah, there's, they're uh, in our town. We got black bears. Cheryl's fussy cutting her power women. Okay. So I think that made it look better by doing the out the edges. And that make it fluffy, furry. So I'm going to put this over to the side and let it dry. I'll sign it after a while. It's a crack of lamps waiting to happen. And I'm going to leave. I just wanted to come in there and see who was in here. And it's good to see all you ladies. <laughs> Y'all have a pleasant evening. And I'm going to go back into the living room and watch one of those silly shows. Okay, Joe. We hear you. Bye, Sherry. Joyce and all Okay, you we're going to do this one now. <clears throat> and I wanted okay. to try to paint on, this uh, woodpecker. And I am going to use my watercolors. And my gouache is my new muse. And <clears throat> the sketch is already sketched out. So it's on watercolor paper, but it's slick. And they went ahead and put the name of the bird at the bottom of the page. So that's what we're painting. It's a red cocked head. Woodpecker, cockadid, cockadid woodpecker, a red one. So there's a little bit of red on his head, and he's black and white. And this is why I don't know if I can do watercolor. I, I feel like I'm, I, I'm going to just end up painting it, like, you know, like the way I do with acrylics. And I'm just going to use my gouache paints to do that with. So here we go. I've got a pipette with some water in it. There is no, oh, I don't know if there's any directions at all in here at all how to paint everything. I think it's just a few techniques uh, on a few of the birds, but not on all of the birds. And um, she talks about toolkit. And this, this book is called Birds, the Watercolor Art Pad, 15 Artworks Already for You to Paint by Emma Full, F-A-U-L-L, -L, Fall, F-A-U-L-L, -L, Fall. And, um, and so she, she's talked about a few techniques, and she has one picture in here of each of the birds on on all the covers and that's your sample to look at 
that's all you've got to look at to paint this little thing. So, um, so I'm going to go ahead and try it. There's no step by step. Um, it, I guess that's what I'm missing. I'm missing my step by step uh, uh, directions because in the other books they told me what to do. <laughs> <laughs> and this one I have to figure out what to do. So even though it's got the sketches for me, <clears throat> which makes it nice, <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> I, I still, I guess maybe I'm still a beginner, and especially in the watercolor department. So I'm going to get my uh, pipette and go over my wall of water palette. And, and technically, I don't paint the outside. I just paint the bird and the tree. So uh, th there might be a hint of something of sky or background or some sort. But for the most part, I'm just painting the bird and the tree. So it shouldn't take me very long to do this. So I've got some water. I know I'm going to be using the browns. So I'll get them wet. And... The, the white, I'm going to be using the white. And I know I'll be needing the red. And that's it. Different shades of browns. Maybe a gray, so I might use the light blue and make some kind of a gray out of it. And who was it that told me how to make... Uh, hi, Debbie. Hi, honey. I think it was... Uh, was it blue and pink make gray? How do you make gray, Debbie? She'll know. It was something like pink and... and uh, green or blue and green or something that made gray we're going to paint this watercolor bird and it's sketched out very very lightly sketched out so here is the bird i am using gouache so it shouldn't take me too long because I don't think the background is all painted. I think you paint just the tree and just the bird. Black and white. Hi, Sandra. Hi, honey. Black and white would make a gray. Okay. Well, I don't really have a black. I have a really dark brown. But that would probably do to do a, a gray. I just want to get some different tones in the bark. Just a few little tones. And it looks like there might be a little bit of yellow. But I used something the other day that Sharon told me. And uh, I can't remember now what it was. So I'm going to, I am going to use a little bit of yellow. Because I see it in the background. Uh, just a very hint. Very hint of it. So here I go. Without further ado, I am a newbie watercolorist. I just received my... First set of gouaches just a month or so ago. And um, should I do the bird first or the or the tree first? Black and white. Okay. But I, I don't know if I should do the background first or do the bird, the top thing first. The bird or do the background first. I can do it either way. Okay, a tan. Yeah, I'm, I see there's a little bit of tan in my tree too, like right there. And then this this is like a blue and maybe a little purple in there and some tan. And then, of course, a little bit of black or dark brown. Okay, guys, thanks. But I don't know what the rules are with uh, watercolors, if you should do the back or the front. Or does it matter? And with gouache, you can paint, you can let it dry and do a coat on top of it on a gouache. Watercolors, you can do a second coat, but it's a little bit harder. 
Nobody's going to say front or back. <laughs> do I go or do I stay? We got any watercolor? Oh, no. Really? Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to try the bird. Okay. Thank you, Tanya, for that permission. <laughs> <laughs> it makes me feel a little bit better. So I'm going to try the bird. And um, <clears throat> I'm going to mix my paint in my palette. I've, I've got a, a dry, it's a moist brush, but it's 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 got all the water squeezed out of it. I don't really want it watery because I don't want it um, all over the place. And for you guys, I am going to... Um, take my pencil and I'm going to make I'm going to sketch this a little darker just for you guys so you can see what I'm doing and uh, if you're doing this at a later time you may not want uh, to sketch yeah Debbie Debbie is a good artist if you don't know Debbie Epps she you need to follow her go follow her she's she's good I've learned a lot of techniques off of, off of Debbie. And I got a lid down in there. Let me try another one. This one's nice and pointy. I'll use this pencil. And I, all I want to do is just highlight some of the markings just for you guys. And so you can sort of see the woodpecker that I'm trying to draw, trying to paint. And his tail goes this way. And then he's got some more tail feathers down here. This might help me out as well. And um, this way, this even though I will be able to see some of the pencil marks under the paint, that's not going to be a big issue for me. And he's got little feet. There's his feet. There's his talons. Okay. And bird, bird, bird. The bird's the word. And so now that now you can sort of maybe see what I'm doing. I'm hoping. I'm not gonna go over all of them, but uh, and then this is the tree. This is part of the tree. And the bark. And then it fades off and, you know, fades off the page. And then there's a hole, with, which is where his nest is. So he's got, and I don't know if this is the, the mother or the father. Uh, sometimes the mothers are real, real um, dull and and uh, natural colored because they don't want to be uh, they want they don't want to show up so predators can't come in and you know attack them. They want to blend in where the guy the guy wants to show off and he's got a red red this part of his head is red right here this is the only part that's red but now we've got them down here and they're a bigger a woodpecker and they're all red headed the whole head is red so anyway i did this for you guys so you all can sort of see what i'm doing and um and then here's the picture once again of of him on the tree so it fades off 
on the both ends, top and bottom, fades off. And this is kind of faded off over on this side. So here we go. Got some paint. So um, I'm going to start off. I, I'm, I'm, I'm really having a hard time thinking about the white marks on the bird. How you get the white marks. Unless you just paint around and leave the white spots. I'm not sure, <laughs> but so I'm just going to dive in, and I don't have black, so I've got to mix. I got to mix me some brown. I don't have a black. I've got a dark brown. And I got some purple. Oh, use frisket. I do have frisket. Okay. I do have some frisket. Or oh, come back with a white Posca pen. Okay. Good night, Sherry, and thanks for coming in. Oh, Teresa's is not feeling well tonight. Okay, we will. Paint around for white. Okay. So, I'm, I do have frisket. I've got two different bottles of it. And I have used it before. <laughs> but it's been a while. So, I have no clue where it is. It's up here somewhere. One moment, please. Here we go. Not very liquidy. Okay, good idea, Debbie. Now, if you don't, if you're not familiar with frisket, let me tell you about it. It's very fun. It's an art product. Um, it's used a lot in watercolor, and um, you paint it on with a brush. It's very chemically. It's uh, it smells and it's thick. And you can even tint this if you want to put a little bit of uh, color in it, a different color other than white. But it's kind of an off white, so I don't think it's going to be hard for me to see. But you put it on to protect the white paper. And I'm, I'm going to paint everywhere there's white on my bird with this stuff. And, I'm, and I want to be neat and clean with it. And it's, it's a rubbery substance. And it won't hurt your paper. So after I paint my black on the bird, none of my white will be affected this rubbery substance you know that guy that flexes seal guy on the commercials and he puts it on the bottom of the boat you know <laughs> it's waterproof and then afterwards after my black has dried i can go back and a, and take this rubber stuff off with an eraser and all of my white will be pure white underneath the frisket. So it's a masking fluid. And it works pretty good. And I have used it before. Because I got it in my possession. So I'm just painting right out of the jar. I don't know if that's allowed or not. But it's what I'm doing. But he's got... A little white on the side of his face, behind his eye. It's really thick. And I believe you can thin it down with mineral spirits. Probably the Gamasol. I don't have any Gamasol.
but it does come in handy. There's a little bit on his nose. And a little bit over his eye. And I'm thinking that this watercolor book is really more for advanced artists. Um, although I may know what I think I'm doing. <laughs> you know I don't. I'm just flying by the seats of my pants. But, um, but this is how you learn, guys. You got to try. You got to try it. And I'm really glad I get to use this stuff because I don't I don't have the opportunity to use it very often. So I am slowly painting all of the white parts on the bird. And as you can see, there's a lot of white parts over here, a lot of dots and designs on this bird that are beautifully made. But um I got Debbie here to <laughs> the rubber tip catalyst brushes work great. Okay. I'll have to put that on my list. I'll get me some. Uh, I need to go to Hobby Lobby one of these days. Hi, Lauren. We're painting. That's right, Cheryl. You put the masking fluid on, let it dry, and then you can paint over top of it. And then when the black dries, I can rub the masking fluid off with an eraser. <laughs> you, Norma has frequent flyer miles on the same airline that I fly on the seat of my pants. Mm -hmm. That's pretty funny. That's right. So, uh, this is going to take me a few minutes to do because it's kind of tedious work. And he does have a lot of spots. So, I definitely want to try to get him as close to uh, as I can. But... Fortunately, the all of the spots are marked for me on this paper. So this is that's the good part about this book. And I'll show you the front of it again here in a minute. If anybody likes to do watercoloring, this is called Birds Watercolor Art Pad with 15 of the avian work artworks for you to paint already sketched out by Emma Fall F-A-U-L-L -L. and uh, <laughs> Joyce says mine is, mine is butt on the ground yep yep uh, but this is interesting so we're going to try this one first and I have no clue if there was any, if this is hard or not. I just saw the woodpecker and I said, oh, we'll do a woodpecker. And that's all I, that's all I said. I have no idea if any of these others are any better than, than this one. But look at the peacock. Isn't that cool? That's got a lot of feathering. But that would be fun with my eyeliner. Mm -hmm. That would be fun. And this is stuff is thick. It really needs to be thinned. But there's nothing I can do about it right at this moment.
Okay, here we go. A lot of dots, a lot of dabbing here. But it's going to look really good when we get done. Now, as I get down further on his back, there's a few lines. So that'll be easier than the dots, the spots. Halfway through. But this is going to be interesting to see. I can't wait. Get the black on there. And watercolor goes pretty fast. It doesn't take long to paint with watercolors. It's fast painting. So we have to work a little hard for the, the good parts. I have to work hard for them. <laughs> now, down on the wings. There's some rows. Okay. And these rows are on each feather. Hi, Nora. Nora just pushes the door open. She, she's not afraid to barge right on in. She's not afraid at all. She's not no scaredy cat. She's not... Okay, I'm just kind of guessing, guessing down here. Do a little bit of guessing. And then there's a white tail feather down here. But this stuff is a is like a reminds you of a silicone glove uh, after it dries, and uh, you can get it started if it's in one line. You could get it started and peel it off, but it supposedly doesn't bother the the paper. It it rubs off like an eraser, and it reminds you of a balloon or something. Plastic wise. Okay, I think that's all of the white. Cool. The rest is red and the red and the black. Okay. There's all the white. I hope I got enough of it. Okay. Okay, Lauren, you're going to be doing ACT for me? Okay. I'm going to let this dry, and uh, I'll talk a little bit about that. Okay, Lauren. And I don't know if this cleans up in water or not, but I'm going to clean it up before it dries. 
I think it just did. It cleaned it up pretty good to me. Hi, Crafty Kitty. Hi, Joy. We're using a little bit of frisky. We're getting frisky tonight. <laughs> this is called Art Masking Fluid. And it's rubber cement type of uh, paint. And we put it on top of the white. Uh, Lauren, at the beginning of my show today and Tuesday, I talked about the ACT cards. The subject is Power Women. So all you need is a woman and a power word on your card. It's we are we are we are beautiful and we are bubbly and we are appealing and we are adorable. It's power women. So you make two cards and get them to me by June the 30th and we're going to swap two cards. Okay, Lauren, uh, do you do you have a uh, messenger or Facebook, Lauren? You don't have to. I can give you my email. I don't use my email a whole lot. But if I know you're going to be uh, sending me something. So it's Beth's Joe Zero. That's a zero. Beth's Joe Zero. So if you'd like to, you can, you can give, send me, just send me, send me your cards and, and, uh, okay. And, and email me and I can, if you, if that's the only way you can communicate with me, that's fine. And I'll send you my address. You made a tank for my son and he needs more tan collars tank. For his army men. Oh, you made a tank, like a like a, a an army, you know, metal tank. For his army men. Woohoo! Did you make it out of clay? How'd you make it, Joy? Yeah, if you're in my Facebook group, we have a file at the top. Yeah, I know, Joyce. Ah, uh, yeah, it should have been one instead of a zero. <laughs> well, you know, when they say, oh, this name's been taken, you have to pick another name, so you add a number to it. And then it's been taken, so you add another number to it. <laughs> so, but anyway, yeah, my Facebook has a, a file at the very top. If you go into the files, you can see our address file. Click on the address files, and all of our files, all of our names and addresses are in there. So, uh, or you can email me. And uh, but I just need two cards, and uh, and I've and I've talked about it at the beginning of both videos of uh, Thursday, Tuesdays, and today's. If you need any more information, and I'm and I recycled mine on. Tissue box paper boxes, cardboard. These are tissue boxes. So you can recycle or you can use a playing card. A deck of cards is the same size, two and a half by three and a half. And I also demoed my ACT book earlier, if you want to go back. Okay, now that I've got this, I'm going to go back to making my black. And I'm going to have to... Um, make black <laughs> so i'm gonna i'm gonna add maybe some dark purple to it brown dark purple what would make black i think that's going to be it right there that's going to make the black And if you ever look at some black paint, you can see an underlying blue in black. Uh, there's something about blacks where they have to have these other colors to help them be black. Yep. 
any kind of woman is because that's our theme it could be a stamp it could be a cartoon it could be a coloring page it could be a a, a woman's catalog uh people's magazine it could be something you can draw uh you can you, you know you might find a doll baby or some kind but it's women it's it's because we're powerful women and and we support each other and that's our theme Yep, you can do it. Just two cards. It's easy. So anyway, I'm mixing up some colors over here on my palette till I get a nice charcoal color. I got it brown. It's brown, all right. Okay, I can do that tonight, Cheryl. I can do that. I'll make a post for the uh, ACT cards. It'll be easy. You send me two, and I will send you back two more from two different people. Okay, what's the key ingredient to make black? I've got brown. I've got brown. But I don't have black. Yep, they can be stamped, they can be magazines, they can be images. Did I add green? Hi, Lisa, honey. I know you've been in there. I did a few minutes ago. I'll add some more. Dark green. If not, this, this bird's not going to be, what if I use, can I use my acrylic paint and use black and just water it down? <laughs> That's what I'm going to do. I've got a real dark cocoa brown now. It's pretty. I can do my tree with it. Red, yellow, blue. Allie, thank you. I didn't put any yellow in it. I was going to resort to the black acrylic. <laughs> well, Allie, thank you, honey, for doing that. I appreciate you. 
We're in this together, right, guys? Hey, it worked. Yeah. It worked. Okay, we got black. It's really good. Now it's charcoal. I stirred it up too much. Do 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 Nobody saw that. Nobody saw that. <laughs> I want him to look really good. <laughs> my my it's more gray than black. <laughs> so I'm just going to invent my own gouache. It's magic. So there it is. A little more water. This is mixed media, girls. We're allowed to do things in the mixed media world. We're not professional painters. We're not professional watercolors. But we are professional. We're professional crafters. I'm a professional crafter. Okay, now I am going to do the bird. And I'm going to do it all in black except for that little red spot up there. And I've been procrastinating this part right here. <laughs> and I'm sorry. It's because I'm not used to it yet. And I'm not sure what I'm doing. So I'm going around the frisket. And I'm, I am going to use some of that gray to highlight around his eye a little bit. And then I might even go back in with like a black paint pen to finish his eye so that it's real, real, real black and glossy. And you can see the frisket is, is uh, bub, you know, kind of bumpy like. But it's underneath, and I and as soon as this black dries, I can rub it off with an eraser. Okay. Debbie said that all six colors make black. And I figured there was a, more of a combination. And I knew there was a lot of blue. Even his beak is black. He's got a little white underneath. And I do have that blocked off. And uh, there's a little bit over his eye. And I've got it blocked off. So this is easy. This bird would be easy to outline with a Posca pen. Okay. And just need to let that dry. And I can use this 
gray that I made, this dark brown that I made, and highlight some of his feathers with it. And his his feet and underneath his belly is more of this over here. So I'm going to start using some of this. It's really more of a gray, but I think I can get by with it. Gonna add some white to it. <laughs> well, thank you, Allie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, you made a tank out of a band aid box and popsicle sticks. Way to go! Post a picture of it, Cat Joy. Post a picture of it in my group. I want to see it. <laughs> Rivets and cool. How fun is that? <laughs> yeah, Debbie. Debbie is an is an is an, is, an, is a helper with me today for sure. So I just add a little bit of white to that that black to make his underbelly a little gray. Now I got to get into that tree. So I can go into the browns now. And if, since I'm going into a darker shade, I, I'm not going to even clean my brush. I'll just use that to my advantage. So the tree has lots of little different uh, values in the bark going down the tree. Uh, so I'm just going to do some of these markings. And we're going to make it calico and play it by ear. I'm not going to kind of, I'm not going to do exactly the way they've got it. We'll do it exactly the way I do it. That's the way we're going to do it. And it sort of fades off at the top and the bottom. It fades. So there's one collar. And some of these dark... Uh, there's some dark lines in there that is like the underneath part of the dark uh, bark, like a shadow underneath. I'm making it up as I go. But it's going to look good. It's going to look good. I like this part. <laughs> so, and then in, inside the brown, inside the hole, we got us a real good watery down part. So, let me get some of this water down. To make it nice and watery. And we're going to use a little bit of this brown. And we're going to lose a little bit of this gold that's already in here. Leftover gold. And make a new shade. And it's perfect. It is perfect. And a little bit darker on the edge. Beautiful. I like this. And a little bit more brown. Maybe this color brown. You just kind of play around with it till you find your happy medium. And I'm going to take a wet brush and go over top of that brown again 
and fade it in. I'm, I love blending. I can blend. See, now that to me looks like just like in the book where you've got these different values going into each other. To me, I think that that whole that uh, birdhouse there in the tree is looking absolutely gorgeous. To me, I, I love that right there. And it's it's a little bit different than the book, but it's very similar. And I can even do another darker shadow on the edge and blend it in. So the way I did that is I took <coughs> my darkest gouache, which is a really dark brown black. And I'm going to go around the whole part of the whole of the, the bird's hole in the tree like that. And then I go over it with a wet brush. Thanks, Lisa. And I'm, and I'm, it's, it's a wet brush, but it's clean. And I go over that last little bit of brown, black, gray that I made. And it, it just fades it together. It fades it and blends it. Now, I love that. I just love it. <sighs> That's icing right there. Icing on the cake. Now I'm going to do the rest on the tree. There is a little bit of a red brown like this one here. This brown here. And I'm going to start feathering that in, mixing that in with the, uh, the rest of the trees. Just take your time. And it's not, it's only like in about five different places. And you use you just use what's left on your brush to your advantage until you get it the right color you want it. There's a little bit more coming down this way. We're making a tree. He's getting handsome, too. This is almost ready to uh, rub the friskus off. So we'll do that next, I guess. And even though I don't have any more paint on my brush, all I have to do is get a little bit of water on it, and the color is still there. I just need a little bit of water, and I can still blend it out of my brush a little bit just to highlight it. I sure can. Okay, now I'm going to go, and I'm going to use a little bit of blue now, this lightest blue that I have. And I won't need a whole lot. I need it to be really, really watered down. And I'm just going to highlight a little bit of blue, blueness. A blueness around the bird. And, and then I'm going to go over it with a wet brush again. And, and spread it out. But the tree's got a little bit of blue uh, mixed in on it. Can you tell? Looking good, looking good. I'm going to take a wet brush now and and uh, get this smoothed down a little bit more. And that's the difference between watercolor and gouache. Your gouache is thicker than the watercolor, and you can almost paint with, with gouache, or you can water it down and take advantage of the watercolor part of it. It's, it's half and half. It's half acrylic and half watercolor. But it is watercolor. It's more of a watercolor than acrylic. But it's opaque. Like the acrylic. Can be. So uh, that blends in good together right there. And let's see. There's a little bit of, well, I got the brown, got the black, 
I think that's what I all I need to do is just kind of smear this blue around a little bit and make it as light as I can. Make it as light as I can. And I'm almost done. Almost done. It, I like it a lot. Okay. So I'm learning, guys. I'm learning. I'm learning how to do all this with you all. And if I can do it, I know you can. You just sort of play around and just piddle, piddle around with it until you get it. It makes it fun. He's coming in, checking on the eggs and seeing if they're, if mom needs any help sitting on them eggs. And, and I really cannot see his feet. Um, their his feet aren't popping out, and I might be able to do a Posca pen and outline the feet. I think that might be my answer to that. Okay, now this is uh this is the red part of the bird. Believe it or not, there's that's it. It's all you get. No more. That's it. And part of that is on top of the frisk. So it'll it, it it's it'll be prettier when I rub it off. And that's the whole that's the whole thing. I'm gonna rub the frisk off next. A little bit darker on the tree. Okay. Okay. I got to do that right there. The brownish gray. Okay. Yeah, I know the camera is a little different. And I'm I'm going to rub the friskus off now. I love the tree. So I have a nice eraser over here. Let's get the eraser out. I've got two different kind of erasers. Uh And both of these work really well on my watercolor paper. And you just lightly rub and the friskus will rub off like that. And it'll just be the, you can see it's like rubber. You can get a hold of it and pull it off if, in one piece if you want to. And uh, you just sort of lightly rub over top of your bird. It's not going to hurt 
hurt the paint or anything. And you, know, you rub it with your fingers until it comes off and you can feel it. And then I can go back over this with, with the white paint and fill in the, the rest of the bird's spots. Now this friscus, I did, I should, I'll have to get me some mineral spirits to thin it down and I couldn't thin it down tonight. Here we go. Well, the masking fluid is is to prevent me from accidentally getting too much black on the bird. And the bird has a lot of white. Okay. The bird has a lot of white on its wings. And so I wanted that brightness of the white. And if I were to use just white paint, it's not like acrylic. It's not hard. It's not like oil. It's not thick. And the black would bleed through. So this is called masking fluid. So I painted all the white parts with the masking fluid. Good question. And then when I get done with the black, I rub the masking fluid off. That's what it's for. It's, it's a rubbery substance made to paint, mask, protect that white part, and then it's made for you to rub it off. That's the way it's made. That's what they use it for. And uh, I've used it before in a couple of other pictures, watercolor pictures, and, and, it, and it works really nice. It's, it's a different art product. Um, I could not have this much of a bright white on this bird if I had not used the masking fluid. But you can see how it, the white is perfectly white like the beginning of the page. And now I can go over it with paint if I want to, I guess, or leave it. Yeah, if you were to put... Um, masking tape down paint your picture and then take the masking tape off when it's dried you would you know it's the same thing it's a it's a masking protective cover-up for a technique it's a technique and this is the results this is the results that i wanted this is exactly what i wanted to mask i wanted this part of my bird to be white I'm going to have to paint the red again. I didn't get enough red, but that's okay. We'll get there. And and as you can see, compared to the picture, I got some pretty daggone good lines going on there. I'm not an expert. I'm just a beginner. But look at the bird and the and the head. And then look at my bird in my head. See the white? I've almost matched it up pretty good. I need to put my red back on. That's okay. We're not done. We're almost done. But the masking fluid helped me get all these little li white lines on the bird. Okay. I can use I can use a black marker and to make it neater, but I think I'm, I am going to try to put my red back in with my, with my uh, eyeliner. Because it, it was cute. I think I can do that. And that's it. That's all the red on this little bird. And uh, and I am going to try to... I don't know if I have a Posca pen. Oh, yes, I do. I have a, 
a fine line or uh, I've got a Sharpie and I can, I can, uh, if I wanted this to be a little smoother here, I can do that. I can go and outline my beak and put the line in my beak with the marker. I think that would help and sort of outline them. And I can fix his little head, maybe make some make some feathers, uh, head feathers. Do a little de detailing here. And then I'm going to make his eye. And he's got this beautiful eyeliner on. Make him a little beady eye. And if I want that to be uh, glistening, I could either use nail polish or uh, some kind of jewel, a jewel glue that, that shines. Jewelry type of glue or something. something. I could put a drop of something there to make it a uh, sparkle. And I am going to go over his his feet. Uh, and and give them a little bit of detail here and his little his little legs. And uh, make him look more realistic. Maybe some little lines on his ankles. Little detail there and just a few little underneath tiny little feathers underneath on his breast. Just something to give a little something hint that there's some really soft feathers there. And I can also do some more feathering on this white. Debbie, should I paint the white or leave the white? Because I could still give it some, some feathers underneath. Leave it white. Okay. So this is a... And I'm using this pen like a Posca and uh, defining some of the lines and the feathers, the layers that he's got. And there is a, a wing that goes down his back. And then this one goes over this away, kind of to the front to make a V on his back wings. And that's about it. I can do some little striation marks here around his neck a little bit on his head and see what you can see a little bit what I've darkened with the pen not too shabby woohoo with my first woodpecker <laughs> Got to have a first for something. If I didn't try, I wouldn't have it. You can do this too. Yeah.
I tried to do that, uh, this this darker part. You're right, Cheryl. There is a little bit of a shadow, and I can still go in and do that. And that's the another good thing about gouache is you can give a second layer. <coughs> and I can do that. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> and I'm going to use some of this. I'm going to try to do this in a little, little bit more of a, like that. Is that better <coughs> on the, I think it is. <coughs> and maybe a little bit of a hard, harder line on the tree, on the outside of the, of the tree <coughs> with my pen. They've got a harder line out here. To separate the inside from the outside. Yeah, I think that does does too. Oh yeah. Wow guys. <laughs> Look what we did. Darker on the edge of the breast. Okay. We're doing this together, you guys. I couldn't do it without you. I can only see so much. And at this time of the evening, it's like I'm like, I've been in here all day. So I'm plumb tired. And this is my very first <laughs> solo watercolor without instructions, you know. And <clears throat> yeah, mm -hmm. and this is just a permanent extra fine tip Sharpie and uh, it's just as good as a Posca pen. Oh, right. The beak. I did do a little bit, a little bit more on his nose. Thanks, Colleen. Well, um, that I don't think, I don't know. I'll just, what I'll do is I'll, I'll rub it off and make sure it's, it's, uh, doesn't clog it up. But 
it won't be the first. <laughs> I go through pens and markers. So I'm, I'm kind of rough on all my equipment, but I use it all. There you go. I have never done anything like this before. So, oh, really? With this, um, Sharon Lombard gifted me this little palette. And she, she didn't give me the tubes, but she gave me swatches of them all. And so I'm definitely going to get me some more. I'm definitely going to get more because I'm going to end up using, you know, like all of the white and some of the colors before, I, you know, it's not going to be used up equally. So I'll have to get me another small set. And I've got me a grocery. I got me a, a list about, about this long, as long as my arm, to get at to <laughs> Hobby Lobby. And uh, so my mom, mom, mama, mama left me a little bit of present. And uh, so I'm going to splurge and get me some art supplies. So uh, I could, I could. Now, the only thing I have a problem with, it could be framed and it's on professional paper. You know, it's got a name on it and everything. I, I would, I need to paint this too. <laughs> I want to paint the background. With a, just a wash, like a little, little, uh, just a little greeny wash. And I'm sure it would be okay. Matted. Okay. Okay. So, uh, yeah, that's that. There's Woody. <laughs> There's Woody. Where he is. So, anyway, this book has has this these two there's cranes peacock european barn swallows aren't they cute <gasps> look at their red their little red heads then there's there's the eagle the golden eagle and i've been watching that all over youtube and there's American Blue Jay. We've got Blue Jays down here. And here's a Kia type of parrot. Probably the owl. The, all of these birds are in here. And they're already sketched out. These papers have their sketches on them. So it makes it easy to paint, you know, to paint on them. And there's, I don't know how many pictures are in here. It doesn't say how many pictures. And all of the pages tear out. And there's, a, there's another, there's, there's those again. So there's all of these birds are in here. Look at that one with the nest. And look how many colors are in that nest. There's red, green, gray, blue. I love that swallow's nest. That's a red-headed weaver. And look at the hummingbird. Perfect. So, I don't know how many pictures are in here. But there's a duck. There's this one. Mandarin duck. The Kia. They're all labeled. So, uh... I don't know which one to do first. Just pick one and do it. Now there's two pages there. Maybe just one. There's the barn swallows. There's the hummingbird. The owl. The eagle. The European robin. Here's the wrens. The red-headed weaver, the crane, the peacock. So, you know, I think these are a little... Oh, here's some more pictures that help. There's some more pictures in here of these birds. And, uh, but I think I can do... I think I can try to do them. This one looks like it might be a little difficult, but I'm up for the challenge. I think I I think I'll do the ivy first before I do all the fall fall. 
<laughs> so, um, yeah. And see this, this page here, they had to put a substitute in because they put the wrong picture in here. They meant to put this one in because it's finished. There's the yellow in the, in the, in the bud of the, the flower. And there's a little bit, I don't know which one's finished. This one has more yellow. But then you can see the strokes on the birds over here. I'm not sure what the deal is about this one. She did it twice. Or maybe this is what the book says and this is what she did. I don't, I don't think that maybe this came out maybe sharon did this one you know sharon gave me the book i bet you sharon did that that's probably where that one came from anyway i think we can do it I, we did this one we can do more we can do more so uh cool really cool now i'm going to mop up some of this water and uh get rid of the get rid of the black wash <laughs> Shh. Shh. we are the only ones who know the truth just us that's our little secret So I'll just mop up a little bit of this, get the water out of it, and then I can shut the lid and let it dry, or I'll let it dry over here before I shut the lid all the way. So um, <clears throat> that is cool. That is really, really cool. So we did the panda. I did this today. This was my the constructed recycled book and I put in this fan folded spine and I put in two sided tape on each side so I can add these in here and they will be stick they'll stick to the two sided tape and they'll go in the spine and then I will have a nice a nice book for all my sketches and they probably shouldn't be rubbing against each other and all that jazz. But, you know, I don't know. <laughs> I got to put them somewhere. I think I would enjoy them in a book. You know, these two are going to rub together. But I don't think it'll be too bad. <laughs> yeah, the bee eaters. Um, there's one in my sketchbook. I think there's a bee eater in my sketchbook in here. Let's see if I can find it. There's the bumblebee. Where did I see a bee eater? Not too long ago. In one of these books, I saw a bee eater. I don't know if I saw it in here or not. And these aren't alphabetized. They're grouped by forest, woodlands, aquatic, and wild animals and farm animals. And they're not alphabetized. I wish they were. But I saw a bee eater bird not too long ago. Maybe it was in this book. Debbie, I think you can. You can spray hairspray on them to seal them so they that they don't rub off. Oreos is not a blackbird, okay? I'll quit. Aquanet, I, I have some. Okay, I can do that. I take them outside and do it. 
All right. So anyway, guys, I am just having a ball with you guys between all of these books and that we've done. And we're going back into this one, Debbie, and I'm finishing up on some. <clears throat> we did the panda tonight out of that book. This is the book that Debbie did. Debbie painted with me last year and we did the elephant and the, and the llama and the, and the giraffe and the raccoon. We did a lot of these and the cat and the cow. The cow was my favorite. It was the first one we did was the cow. And uh, we just had a lot of fun with this book. And, uh, and this was an unusual way to paint. You started out with a green cow and a pink background, a red background. And then by the time you get to, to number 10 of the of the sketch, or number seven, this one's seven, it, 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 it's reversed. But it started out with an underlayer of green under the under the cow. And it was it was fun. You see, the background was red and the cow was green. And then you little by little change the collar over and you end up getting a pink or the red tone back on the cow. And there's something about underlayering these collars and they were act they were accent collars. Debbie streams 4 p.m. Eastern. Yeah, Debbie likes to stream, so be sure and and uh, check with her and get her get uh, subscribed to Debbie. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, but um, but there was four of us that did these a, a lot of these sketches, and it was Colleen Krebs and Kathy Berg and Debbie Epps and me, and we did these all last year and and we were on each other's streams i don't remember who streamed <laughs> and it doesn't matter but but we did we did these together so on somebody's somebody's channel got this and uh, and let me show you the panda we did tonight i don't know if you were here if we did the poke we did poly panda polka dot <laughs> the pox poly panda pox so we did the panda and this is exactly the way she did it in the book i've got to do black on the eyes yet that i was waiting for the dry that to dry and we haven't done there was another dog in the front of the book that didn't have directions and this little dog was in, in the front of the book so i sketched him out uh, we didn't do this cat somewhere in the book, in the front. And then Luke was in the front on the introduction. So I drew Luke, and he had these Luke de doos around him framed. So there was Luke. So I've got these, and these are the last ones out of that book. So I love it that we can go through. I, I can't believe I've gone through the whole books. <laughs> all of the books but i think i've got i don't think i have any paintings in this book now this i mask this is how i did the masking fluid on this on this artwork here i masked this whole sh this whole shadow and dripped paint down and then i rubbed the mask off but i don't think oh yeah the cow's here here's the cow Here's our little cow, Miss Lily. I put googly eyes on her. I will. I will, Cheryl. I'll show you the bird. Okay. So, uh, and here's the llama. Love the llama. We put real eyelashes on her from the Dollar Tree. <laughs> we did have fun doing these, Debbie. We'll, maybe we'll do them again. And this is the rooster that I did. And I went rogue. This is nothing like the book. Because I added I added feathers. 
And uh, and this was I did this one instead of painting it, I paper pieced it. The the billy goat. And the, and the pig. I got lash eyelashes on the pig too. <laughs> Big eyelashes. <laughs> and the duck. And I did this one in in pencil, in ink tints. And then I then I did it again, and we put the mermaid on the back of the duck, and I put feathers on the duck. Debbie sold the rooster. Woohoo! Well, I just did my rooster the other day, uh, Tuesday. Is it in this book? Where did I do the rooster at? Yeah, this I just did this Tuesday. And he turned he turned into a golden rooster. And I this is sketched pretty much the way it was sketched in the book. I tried to follow the book on the sketching. And uh and I did have to change the collars. I couldn't use her collars. <laughs> I wanted to use my collars. <laughs> but uh but I'm coming along pretty cool, guys. I'm happy. I'm happy. There's Rocky. I liked Rocky. Yeah, the bee eater is a bird. That's correct. And I saw it not too long ago. And there's my my pink flamingo. And in the book, it was green. And I couldn't do a green flamingo. So I I went I went rogue on this one too. I rebelled. <laughs> And it's good. I like it. I liked it. So we do. We have lots of fun. We really do. And I love Bandit. And he was a pug. And I think in the book, she had him in a pink tone. And um, and and Bandit is the little dog on Johnny Quest, the cartoon. And, and he was one of my favorite characters. So I couldn't paint him pink. I had to I have to leave them leave them black and white. Yeah, that's bandit. <laughs> so guys, this one turned out real good. I for a first time doing a zebra, this was hard. I, I, I really had my doubts that I was gonna get this one done right. But horses are hard to do. And then here's flipper. So we've had a lot of fun. So we're going to do some more. I'm going to get some more books, but we're going to finish. We've got to do some more sketching. There were 75 sketches, and I don't expect to do all 75, but I think we can do a few more out of that book before we quit, and then we'll finish this book, and we're ready. And then by that time, I'll have another book. I really have. I mean, uh, this was this was different because you start out with a purple head. The paint, the purple in the background was was all purple, and then you let it dry, and then you paint the gray on top, and some of the purple comes through. I was very surprised, and I it turned out to be one of my favorites. Yeah, the dolphin was different. I, I I didn't know if I could do it, but I did. Uh, I, I I did okay. I just did okay. So, yeah, this is a fib paint along. <laughs> we were the fibs. So, yeah, yeah. And and I, I uh, textured, uh, stencil down here. It's got spackling texture. On a, through a stencil, and then I painted the, the garden, and it's like he's coming up out of the garden. Yes, underpainting. I'm getting into that, and and uh, of course I've always liked to blend. I'm a big blender, and the underpainting. And this book had a lot of underpainting. Yeah, and uh, I was really surprised that this turned out as cute as it did. <laughs> I loved it. I loved having the. Having the mixed media on it. She's going to a wedding. Yeah. They're all cute. So, and then I had to put earrings on, on this gal. 
<laughs> but you know, you have to try. And I did now. This was Abby, and it doesn't look like Abby, but I tried. And that's the whole key. And every time you try, you try and you get a little better and you get a little better. And then it just clicks in and you go, oh, I know what to do now. It clicks in after a while. So, uh, so guys, thanks for hanging out with me tonight and painting with me. And, and uh, uh, we are going to do this one Saturday. And I will show you what he looks like. He's in the front of the book. He's a cute little guy. He's a cutie pie. There's Luke. We're going to do Luke. But we're going to do this other little dog first. And he's not, he doesn't have directions. There he is. We're going to do this little feller. And I sketched him out. So, so that's what we're going to do Saturday. I'll take pictures and post it for you guys. And I'm just going to do simple. I'm not going to, I'm not going to try to, he's got a harness on. I guess I could try his, draw his harness. I'll do some, I'll do some more sketching on him. Yeah, I know, Debbie. I, I, I need to work on how to do that. Well, thank you, Norman. Thanks for hanging out with me tonight. Been a pleasure. So, uh, uh, I think, you know, the more we do, the more we learn, and the more we learn, the better we get, and the better we get, the fun, it, the fun comes in. <laughs> then it gets to be fun. And you have to go through an ugly stage before you get to the pretty stage. So anyway, uh, uh, I wanted to get Lauren's uh, name down on the ACT. We are doing an ACT swap at the end of the month. So if anybody wants to do two ACTs is all you need. We're up to 16 people. So uh, we're going to do we're going to do that. So I'll be back Saturday. Show the bird, the yellow bird, or the bird, the, the, this bird. Good night, Debbie. Thanks for hanging. Oh, the other bird in the book, the yellow bird in the book, it was a duck. Yes, I can show the duck. He was Howard. That was Howard. <laughs> He's got feathers. Here he is. Is this one you wanted to see, Cheryl? And uh, <clears throat> this one, I did it in ink tints pencils. And I drawed everything. And I drawed the, the bottom of the, the pond and everything. And the ink tints pencils, you got to go over it a little bit with a wet brush. And it made all this pretty yumminess. Then we did it again with acrylic paint. And I used mixed media in it. And I've got mixed media all through the, you know, with the, with the feathers and the, the mermaid with a sticker and stuff like that. A bird in the messenger. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, okay. It's a different Oreo. Look at this black and yellow Oreo. Very pretty. Very nice. Thank you, Cheryl. Okay. Okay. 
so anyway that's all i'm going to do tonight so i will see you guys saturday if you have any questions you can message me right no it's not a blackbird orioles usually are two-toned a boston oreo i think is uh black and yellow too there's different kinds so guys good night thank you for hanging with me we had a lot of fun we got a lot done I'm going to post a, a, a thing about the ATCs on my Facebook. Yes, I will. <laughs> no, Joyce, you're not a mess. You're good, Joyce. We like you. We like having you with us. Okay, Lauren, Lorena. Uh, I'll, I'll check my email, Lauren. Lorena. So, okay, guys. Good night. Thanks. Thanks for coming. <laughs>